Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto was transformed into a spirit fox. Part 1. Here is a quick summary. Naruto's greatest adventure now begins as he begins to transform into a spirit fox. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. The sun was going down as Naruto walked through Kanahakir. He had just gone through hell again after returning from the another mission without Sasuke, which didn't help his image in the village. As he walked down the street the villagers glared at him some through thing others just stood there and yelled demon, why don't you leave and never come back. As he reached the center of town only a few blocks from his house, he was alerted to the sound of people. Lots of people, and to make it worse they were armed. Just great the last thing I need is an angry mob. Naruto thought his turn to face the mob. And there they were, about 60 of the villagers and a few ninja here and there. He stared at them for about 5 seconds before he turned his back to the crowd and started to walk away. This prompted the crowd to start to rush towards him, but they stopped when he turned around. His eyes were red and slitted was there was visible red aura surrounding him, and his shadow it wasn't human. As they looked at it on the ground its form twisted and the shadow grew until it resembled the Kuaibi, a tail swishing in every direction. The voice that came from him was hardly human as he uttered leave. Now. To say that the people in the mob ran away would be redundant, it was more like track runners on steroids. When they were out of sight Naruto slowly began to change back into his normal form, his shadow receded as the nine-tailed fox chakra faded from his being. He hadn't expected a mob, but then again he hadn't expected Sakura to almost try and kill him either. The first week he's back from training and Sasuke with Orochimaru had been spotted in the wave country. He was sent out with a team of Anbu plus Jiraiya to retrieve Sasuke and take down Orochimaru. The mission turned out as a complete slaughter of the team. When they found the supposed area they were ambushed by a small battalion of sound ninja. The battle raged for hours and just when it seemed they would win who should show up, but Orochimaru and Sasuke. They teamed up on Jiraiya attacking the Toad Senen relentlessly while Naruto and the Anbu battled the sound ninja. In the chaos of the battle Jiraiya was beginning to weaken from the combined attacks from the Ichiha with the Snake Senen and although most of the sound ninja had been dispatched, the Anbu were beginning to fall one by one to their power. The battle looked one-sided as they defended themselves against Orchimaru, Sasuke, and the large group of sound ninja for over an hour, but in the end it looked like they would lose. Until. Naruto flinched at the memory, closing his eyes he envisioned himself in his four-tailed state. It happened right as Jiraiya seemed beat, the chakra in the area flared as the Kuaibi made its presence known through Naruto, but this time it was different. Almost as if Naruto had partial control of himself as he fought both Orochimaru and Sasuke. Eventually the battle began to toll his opponents, and it seemed like he would walk away alive. That was before he was struck with the combined force of Orochimaru's Kusanagi and Sasuke's new technique the Chidori Blade, straight in the back. But just when it seemed like all was lost there was eruption of red and blue chakra from his body, the force of it blowing away all in the area. The blast took out any sound ninja left and blew any others away, knocking out Jiria in the process and the last remaining Anbu. After that all he remembered blacking out. Yet somehow he had been able to carry Jiraiya and the Anbu whose name was Ryoma all the way to the village gate, even with a gaping hole in his upper back. The only good thing to come out of it was that when he woke up in the hospital three days later, he found that Jiraiya and Ryoma were in good health. Later that day he was visited by Ryoma's family who gave him their thanks and left him with dinner. That was the only good thing that had happened he thought. Those memory brought him back to today. Today was not a good day. It started earlier when Sakura had learned of the mission's failure and had confronted him about it. He shook his head not wanting to think about anything anymore. Tired dejected and now very very angry he made his way to the small apartment he called home. Walking up to his bed he fell into it not really caring to remove his clothes. Soon he fell into a deep sleep. Naruto woke in a hallway the whole hall was red and there seemed to be a fine red mist coming from the ground. He stood up slowly recognizing the hall in which he stood it was the link between him and the nine-tailed fox. Wondering why he was in the confines of his mind he wandered down the hallway until he was in front of the familiar gate, ready to begin his usual talk with Kuaibi. Only the gate was open. Naruto stared in horror as he walked up to the gate to examine it. On one side the talisman that said seal was still there, but the gate was wide open. Slowly he walked into the large chamber that held the nine-tailed fox, but it was nowhere to be seen as he walked through the large room looking from side to side, then he felt it. It was a hot breath going down his neck that smelled of death and felt of anger, malice and darkness. He turned around to find nothing there. Where are you you stupid fox stop playing games with me. Naruto yelled out of fear. The air in front of him slowly started to churn as red chakra began to gather in one spot. 
the ball of chakra began to slowly rise into the air forming a fox head, the eyes slowly lowering to Naruto, as red chakra began to mass at its base. The body of Kuaibi began to appear out of the chakra its red fur glowing with its demonic chakra. Here I am kid the Kuaibi said with a strangely evil grin, as it watched Naruto cower in fear. Slowly Kuaibi stalked around then disappeared, Naruto looked around frantically searching for the giant fox, as he was alerted to a presence behind him. Slowly he turned around and found himself staring at a pair of large, sharp, pointed fangs. He nearly jumped out of his skin as he jumped back from the menacing pair of fangs. There was a deep rumbling form the fox that sounded almost as if. As if it were laughing at him. Kuaibi reared his head back as it laughed at Naruto. Its laughing died as it brought its tear back down on him. So kid do you know why I summoned you here? He asked his demonic smirk never leaving his face. Naruto still recovering from the shock of a near heart attack, shock his head no slowly. There is a very trying time ahead for you. And me. Adding the last part as if to emphasize his dislike of the situation. Kid do you know what happens when you mix hot water and warm water? Naruto was wondering what in the world that had to do with being what was going on, but thought it best to answer seeing as there was a giant demon fox in front of him. Huh? You get warm water, but what does that have to do with anything? Naruto yelled to the giant demon fox in front of him. I'll get to that in due time, but first there are some things you need to know the first of which being the story of your heritage and how I came to be inside you. About 14 years ago I attacked this village for certain reasons, and I was stopped by the strongest ninja in here at the time, he was the Yanmin Datya, so everybody knows that. Naruto interrupted the fox. Do not interrupt Kit. Yelled Kuaibi making Naruto cower in fear. Now as I was saying your father was a very powerful ninja. He paused so he could let Naruto absorb all the information. My. My. My father. Yes Kit, your father. When I attacked the village it was not of my own choice. I was summoned here and placed under a binding just to that didn't quite work, and I lost control of myself. In my rage and flattened everything until I came to your village. I began attacking and killing many humans revaluing in the destruction I caused and at the pitiful ninja who tried to stop me with their weak attacks. There was a loud stomp as I turned around to find myself staring at a giant toad with a human on top of its head. The human began making hand signs, hand signs that I didn't recognize were a powerful sealing jutsu. The rest is history said the fox as if it was nothing important. Naruto sat on the ground confused. But why, why did he seal you and me why? Ah I was hoping you would ask that, you see your father needed a newborn life to seal me to seeing how as you were the only one born that day, he had no choice for if he had tried to. Seal me and any other person the seal would have not lasted more than a day or two at most, and that would have not done any good at all. Dot said the fox as he paced about in circles around Naruto. The seal that he used cost him his life and left you with some special traits as you are about to learn. After the shock of realizing I had been sealed into a child I became even more angry, but that anger died after the first few months. Your father was the only being I have ever deemed worthy of my respect. So as a sort of. An honoring to him I will make sure you learn how to use and control your new abilities. That brings me to the point of my earlier question the mixing of water. Said Kuaibi as he watched Naruto give a look as if asking what does that have to do with anything. The seal that your father used not only sealed me to you, it sealed our souls together. Think of yourself as residual light and me as residual darkness if you mix the two together you get neutrality. The fox watched Naruto as he looked up at him with a lost look. Huh. You are a dense kid aren't you? Said the fox. To be blunt your soul is cold water mine is hot water when you mix the two together you get. He paused waiting for Naruto to fill in the blank. Um warm water, but still what does that have to do with anything? This is going to take a while said Kuaibi to himself with a sigh. This kid was going to be the source of many headaches in the future he just knew it. The seal that bond us together is now bonding our souls together, so in effect I am now a part of you just as you are a part of me in other words, you are turning into a nine-tailed fox. Naruto froze as the words from Kuaibi hit him like a hammer. I'm turning into a fox. He asked as he stared up at the grinning demon fox before him. In a way yes, you see because our souls have fused you have gained some abilities as I said earlier. From now on you will have two forms in which you can appear, your human form and your fox form. In addition to this your senses will sharpen and your chakra limits will increase greatly, you will still be able to use my chakra whenever you please though. He said with a bit of disdain. Then there is the mind link meaning that you will be able to communicate with me whenever you please, and vice versa. Naruto took note as the fox explained the things that would be happening soon. Soon with the next half moon you will change into your fox form for the first time, but be warned you will not have control over it at first, so just write it out. You will notice your senses sharpen, and your chakra will slowly start to build up over the next three day by then it will be the half moon, and you shall transform for the first time. When you transform you won't be as big as I am, but you will be bigger than any normal fox. 
The fox let out a stifled laugh as a thought ran through his head. It would seem that I have in fact become part of your bloodline trait kit. All the abilities that you now possess will also become your offsprings as well, but we talk more on that later, now it is time for you to sleep Kitty said lower himself till he was laying at Naruto's side. Naruto soon fell asleep against the giant fox's side, as one of the many tails slowly came up to cover him like a blanket. Kuibi looked down at the sleeping boy, wondering why he had just did that in his mind he thought. For a human this kid is strong, but then again he not really all that human anymore, as he ha 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 he laid his head down and fell into sleep. It was a strange scene, a boy lay sleeping against a giant nine-tailed fox. One of the tails covering him like a blanket while the fox lay asleep. The morning rays of the sun passed through Naruto's window as he lay still sleeping on his bed. Deep inside his mind his guest had already awakened some time ago. Wake up kid you have much to do today, he yelled at his would-be container from within the confines of his mind. Slowly Naruto rose out of bed feeling as if the world had crashed down on him. He then began to recall last night, wondering if it was all a dream it was no dream kid came the voice of Kuibi. In his head causing him to jump out of the bed and land fact first on the floor. This is going to be a long day thought Kuibi as he shook his head inside his would-be container. After picking himself up off the floor Naruto began his daily morning routine, brush teeth, get dressed, eat ramen, suffer abuse from townspeople, train, eat more ramen, go home try to sleep. It was about then that he realized that the fox had just talked to him not more than a minute ago, and suddenly, as if it were a flashback the events of last night played through his head. Then for the first time in history Naruto Uzumaki heir to the Yanmin container of the Kuaibi and future nine-tailed fox, fainted and fell to the ground with a very audible thump. Outside the hidden village of Kanhana a group of sound ninja were planning their attack. They had received orders from Orochimaru himself before they had left the sound village. So our orders are to capture the heir to the Hyuga clan, the copy ninja with the Sharingan in his right eye, and possibly if we can the nine-tailed fox. We will move in two day after we are sure our presence has not been detected. The one that was obviously the leader said as he his dark frame seemed to float over to the area where the rest of the sound ninja were gathered. We will first attack the copy ninja. After he is disabled we will move to the Hyuga compound and make our assault, only then if we have a chance will we go after the nine-tailed fox, but remember that he will most likely be protected by the Anbu Black Ops, and it will be no easy task to subdue him. Unknown to the sound ninja to shapes were watching them from a tree about 50 feet away. Think we should go ahead and take them out. Set on figure. Nah, we'll use this as a test for them to see how good they are said the other. With that they disappeared without so much as a flicker. Soon Naruto soon we shall see if you are worthy of the name Uzumaki. Naruto was going about his training off in the forest, after he had gotten over the initial shock of things with some help from Kuaibi he had started his morning routine, and he was now hammering away at invisible opponents. Okay now let's try this again he said summoning up his chakra to his right hand. Slowly the chakra began whirling until it began to condense into a ball. He then began to focus his on the whirling chakra in his left hand, willing it to become a sphere like the one in his right hand. After about five minutes with no success he gave up and dropped his left, the chakra dispersing as he did so. Looking back at the Rasigan in his right hand, he concentrated on the large boulder that stood in front of him. Now in Vi's and a strong opponent he thought as he stared at the swirling ball of chakra in his hand. He looked back to the rock and in an instant he saw his opponent materialize where the rock was. It was Sasuke. He ran at the imaginary image of his once friend and aimed the Rasigan straight at its chest, but at the last second he diverted his attack. The Rasigan struck the ground and exploded with the force of a bomb. He looked up at the rock after crawling out of the crater that his attack had made. In his mind's eye he could see what would have actually happened had the battle been real, he saw himself and Sasuke rushing at each other, and just as he diverted his attack, he would have been struck through the chest with Chidori. He looked back at the crater and then the rock. It had been a long day for him today. He had skipped most of his daily routine and had come straight out to the forest surrounding the village to train. It was about midway when he began walking away thinking about something when he noticed he wasn't in the forest anymore, instead he stood in front of the large open gate in his head. Ha ha ha. Still can't do it, I see Dot laughed a demon as its red eyes, and huge demonic grin appeared just beyond the open doors of the gate. Naruto for the second time in that week nearly jumped out of his skin from the shock of seeing the gates open, and from the shock of being within killing distance of Kuaibi. Seeing this the giant demon fox again let out another strangely scary laugh. Naruto who was now recovered from his near heart attack, looked at the grinning demon and started shouting. You stupid fox. You scared the hell out of me, and what's with bringing me down here when I was in the middle of thinking about something. So I see you still can't bring yourself to kill the Ichiha boy. Said the fox as he stared at Naruto. Naruto put his head down at that admission. It was true he couldn't bring himself to kill Sasuke, even though the feeling wasn't mutual. 
you won't be able to kill now, you should wait for your powers to manifest. Naruto just grumbled in response. In truth he was still thinking about what the fox had said to him earlier about not being able to kill Sasuke. No matter how hard he tried he just couldn't bring himself to kill one who he consider a friend. No more than that a brother. Even if the feeling wasn't mutual. The fox looked up for a moment as if it were looking out of a window. It held back a laugh as it saw an opportune moment to mess with his host. He grinned manically. Tell me kid what were you thinking about hat was so important. It wouldn't have happened to be that high Uga girl would it? Asked the fox whose grin seemed to have grown about twice its size. But hi Uga girl. Said Naruto. The one that is about to tap you on your shoulder right now I think her name is. Hinata. Said the fox with a twisted grin. What? Naruto found himself in the forest once again sitting against a tree as he felt a slight tapping on his shoulder. I am going to kill you he thought at the fox who if could be seen at the time was rolling around in laughter. Then Naruto-kun. Hinata asked as she tapped his shoulder again. Oh hi Hinata he said as he got up. Sorry I was kinda sleep I guess he said with his famous smile. Hinata blushed as he looked at her moving her head down to avoid eye contact. Naruto looked down at her hand and noticed that she was carrying a basket, it was then that his stomach reminded is that he hadn't ate that morning with a loud growl. Naruto blushed as he held his stomach and slid down against the tree's trunk. Hinata who was a bit surprised to say the least at the source of the nose gently held. Out her hand with the basket and asked timidly and Naruto kun w would you you like to share m my lunch with m me? That would be awesome Hinata he said as he stood up with a very large smile on his face. Hinata could only blush as he moved over to make room against the tree trunk. She had to fight to stay unconscious as the blood rushed to her head. Hinata opened her basket and took out some sandwiches she handed one for Naruto and she kept one for herself. Naruto wasted no time as he took a bite out of the sandwich and froze. Hinata looked at him with her head down he doesn't like it she thought sadly as she looked at Naruto who had tear running down his face. This is the best sandwich I've ever eaten. He yelled at the top of his lungs, causing Hinata to blush and look down while playing with her fingers. Ah really? She asked daring to bring her eyes upon her secret crush. Yeah there Grady said taking another rather large bit of the sandwich. From there on they continued to eat in silence until Naruto brought his head up to look around as if he had heard something. Hinata-chan did you hear something? He asked. Hinata having heard nothing looked around. I I didn't hear anything and Naruto kun she said as she tried to make eye contact with him falling miserably. Oh okay he said as he went back to eating. Unknown to Naruto he had indeed heard something, with his senses beginning to sharpen, had he paid more attention, he would have heard the sound ninja that was watching them leave. So the fox and the high uga seemed to be quite close, I must report this to the commander. Said the sound ninja as he jumped through the trees. He made his way back to the sound ninja camp, which happened to be by the large waterfall where Jiraiya had trained Naruto, cleverly hidden by the strong Jinjutsu. Looking around to see if the area was clear he entered the cave behind the waterfall. Commander I have news that may serve to put us in favor of success. Naruto stretched himself out as he leaned against a tree, he would definitely have to ask Hinata to share her lunch with him again one day. He sighed as he looked toward the sky and then towards Hinata who was currently napping against the tree, well actually she passed out when Naruto hugged her for sharing her lunch with him. He let his eye wander over her frame. She had grown into quite the lovely young lady, she had grown her hair out and had filled into her figure quite nicely, it was a wonder to him why she was still single, she had all the right curves in all the right areas. In the two years that he had trained with Yuria he had missed her for some reason he didn't quite understand, sure he had missed his other friends, but he missed her. Differently. She was one of the only people who actually treated him like a real person instead of a demon, which most of the village saw him as, he had come to see her as a close friend without even noticing. It. So the young kid has started looking at girls eh? My they grow up so fast came the. Snickering voice from his head. What's that supposed to mean? Naruto asked angrily to the fox. But missing the underlying insinuation. Nothing oh nothing, so tell me kid is this your girlfriend? I the fox could be seen he would have surely have had a large grin on his face. What? Hinata is not my girlfriend she is just a friend, and that's it. From inside his head came the unmistakable laugh of the fox. Do you like her? Asked the fox. What kind of question is that of course I like her. She seems quite attached to you kid. She is one who has treated you differently from the other, treasure her as she is a but a moonflower that will soon blossom. One that will not wilt when the harsh daylight of truth beams down. For you are as the light of the moon to her dot. But that said the fox retreated into Naruto mind leaving Naruto clueless before he could ask any questions. If he is anything like his father he'll figure it out in time thought the kuaibi as he laid down for a fox nap. Naruto was indeed confused, partly because of the cryptic message Kuaibi had given to him, and partly because of the question he had asked earlier. Sure he liked Hinata, but it wasn't like he was her boyfriend. But he found he didn't find the idea a bad thing. 
Am Fox leaving cryptic messages he said turning his head to her as she slept in peaceful bliss. Little did he know that the seeds of love had been planted within his heart, and with some help for a certain nine-tailed farmer, they would soon blossom into something beautiful. Unbeknownst he and Hinata both were being watched by the same two figures from before. So that's the kid huh, said the figure hanging upside down from a tree branch. Yep that's Rashi's kid alright, looks just like him when he was little, said the one crouching on the branch next to him. Two days now till he transforms so let lay low and watch dot said the upside down figure. I agree let let what happens happen said the other as he turned to face the other. Besides I don't think that we the Aritameto B-A-T-O-U-S-A-I-1 need to make our appearance just yet eh brother? Said the figure on the branch. Agreed. He said as he flipped up onto the branch to stand next to his brother. The Aritameto Batausai looked out at Naruto. Soon Naruto soon. Naruto stood atop a tree the light breeze playing through his hair, his eyes slowly focusing in on the semi-bright sphere. He was looking towards the moon now visible against the painted sunset sky, it was almost half full. So it will be tomorrow night then he thought. Today had been interesting he thought with a smirk. He had stayed with Hinata all afternoon while she slept. When she awoke she was surprised to find that the sun was almost setting. After that she had left in a hurry, saying something about her father being furious if she missed dinner. Naruto had walked with her to the boundaries of the Hyuga compound, seeing her in after that he had left. Tomorrow is the night kid, the night of your first transformation, so there are some things you need to know. Said Kaiubi through the mind link shaking Naruto fro his revere. First of all when you transform you will not have control of yourself. What do you mean I won't have control of myself? Naruto interrupted. Inside his mind the fox was hitting his head on the bars of the seal, things would be so much easier if this kid would shut up and listen, so taking a deep breath he yelled as loud as he could. Shut up. Roared the fox so loud that Naruto lost his balance and fell off the tree hitting his head very hard. Effectively and completely knocking him out. Naruto woke up with a killer headache and he felt like he had stood next to a fire alarm because his ear wouldn't stop ringing and what's worse, he had fell onto something soft, furry and glowing red. Oh crap. He looked up to see that he was on top of one Kyuubi's mini tails. And the fox did not look too happy, also Naruto thought he imagined it, but HT thought he saw a large knot of the fox's head, but why would there be a knot of the head of the almighty Kuibi right? Nice going kid you knocked yourself out. Yelled the angry fox demon. Naruto opened his mouth to retort, but before he could say anything the fox stopped him. As I was saying when you transform you won't have control over yourself. At least not full control. Naruto taking the silence from the fox as the okay for him to ask question asked in confusion. What do you mean at least not full control? When you first transform you will be swamped with power, so much your mind will revert back onto its basic primal fox ways. Seeing the look on Naruto's face the fox thought it'd be better if he explained a bit more. You will be able to recognize everything, but your mind will lack coherent thought. You'll still be able to recognize the people in your life, so don't worry about hurting them. The wave of relief washed over Naruto after the fox had said those words. But you will see them in a more animalistic way sort of like. A pack. Other than this you should be alright. But I caution you kid, make sure there is no one around, so when you transform no one will see you. The sight of you in your fox form would not have good results. Naruto shook his head in agreement at that part, as he imagined the village in panic. Also when you transform I will not be able to talk to you. A look of worry came over Naruto's face. Don't worry though this all only happens during first transformation after this, you'll be able to transform at will and will have all your wits about you. Concluded Kaiubi with that Naruto found himself upside down at a strange angle, then he remembered he fell out of a tree. It was now just after sunset so he made his way home. Then bowels of rain and later he was in bed sleep, oblivious to the insidious plot that was being schemed around him. Inside of the cave the sound ninja were making their final preparation for tomorrow night's raid the commander, an elite sound Jounin rose out of the shadows as his countenance was made visible to the rest of the ninja. Slowly he went over the plan with the rest of the ninja. First squad A will capture the Hyuga air, while squad C and D cause four large-scale explosions, alerting the village to the attack, this will draw out the village's defense ninja. Squad B will then move out from the vantage point and locate the copy ninja, with the assistance of squad D turning to his men, he focused in on them. Use extreme caution and when in battle with him avoid looking into his eyes. It is most likely that the copy ninja won't be alone so be prepared. There may be two crucial factors in this plan though. Two of the Sanin inhabit Kanoha one is the Hokage and should be easily spotted the other is an old man with long white hair that wear green and red. If you encounter either one of these Sanin squads B and D will retreat at all costs we are no match from them. In addition to this I have received information that the nine-tailed fox in quite close to the Hyuga air and there is a slight chance she may or may not be within the company of the nine-tailed fox so we will adjust the plan accordingly. Squad C will assist squad A only if needed in her capture. 
spoke the voice of the elite as he paced between his men. Only after the first two objectives have been achieved should we attempt to go after the nine-tailed fox. Capturing the nine-tailed fox is not crucial to this raid and can be accomplished at a later time, but it would greatly be in our advantage if we were to capture it. Be warned the fox will be no easy objective to capture, especially if he is in the company of the Hyuga heir. If that is the case and he proves to be too strong retreat immediately, regardless of whether the first objectives have been accomplished or not, we cannot risk Kanoha finding out about our plans. Unknown to them two Anbu guards stood in the bushes just outside the cave. We have to report this the Hokage dot with it they disappeared into the night. Not far from the two Anbu the Arai Meadow Batous I watched from a distance. The cards are set dot and the game is in motion dot it was going to be one of those nights tomorrow. The morning sunlight filtered through the window of Naruto's apartment, abruptly putting an end to the peacefulness of his sleep. He sat up in bed opened his eyes and shut them as quick as he could. What the? Why is everything so freaking bright he thought as he rubbed his eyes. Oh so I see our powers are manifesting quite well aren't they? Asked the fox in a mocking tone. It would seem your senses have almost finished strengthening. Okay now at least he knew why his eyes hurt like heck they were getting stronger, and so he had to let them adjust to the light okay, so how do I turn them off dot, after some explaining on the finer parts of sense control, Naruto made his way out of his apartment. He could tell this was going to be an interesting day indeed for when he first stepped outside it was like walking into a new world. Wow he thought as he walked out of his home and into the streets of Konoha. The smells the sound even the colors all seemed more vivid, it was amazing. He could smell the scent of the ramen even before he left his doorstep. Instead of his usual mad dash to the Ichiraku today Naruto walked soaking up the colors sound and scent of Konoha, as if he had never been there before. Tsunade lay asleep on her desk up to her eyebrows in paperwork today had not been her day. First she was woken up by her alarm clock, much to the annoyance of the blonde Hokage, seeing as she had a hangover and judging how far the clock flew through the wall. Then when she had gotten to her office the first thing that happened was Shizun criticizing her about her drinking habits and taking away all alcoholics item in her office. Then there was the giant stack of paperwork sitting on her desk, most of which were letters from village elders blaming Naruto for the failure of the takedown mission. After debating whether or not to burn them into a pile of ashes with a fire jutsu she had fallen asleep and now she was about to be disrupted again as to Anbu poofed into existence in her office. Now when you are an Anbu black op you have to know three things. One you have to report directly to the Hokage. Two you never wake up Tsunade. Three you or your partner will have to wake up said Hokage and get punched very hard. The two Anbu exchanged looks that said I'm not doing it you do it, and hell no, you must be out your mind if you think I'm doing it. So being the elite, the best Kanoha had to offer they did what any Anbu member would do in a situation like this. They played rock paper scissors. The morning piece of Kanoha was shattered by the sound of an Anbu being punched through the wall of the Hokage's office. Rubbing the sleep from her eye Tsunade rose to sitting position on her desk when she noticed the lone Anbu and the hole in the wall note to self stop punching people through walls. She thought as she massaged her temples. After looking at his partner blast through the wall, the Anbu member thought it would be a good time to speak now. Okijama we have discovered a large congregation of sound ninja stationed to attack tonight. There seem to be about four squads of 25. Tsunade's eyes sharpened. Damn thought Tsunade this was not good at all, she hadn't expect a retaliation from the previous mission so soon. I want all Jown and Anbu Black Oops and Upper Level Chunin to meet in the war room in one hour time is of the essence. Hi Hokage-sama as the Anbu turned to leave he was stopped by a question from Tsunade. Did you overhear their plans? Yes they are involving the Hyuga clan, Kakashi Hadaki and the holder of Kaiubi. That was enough to send Tsunade into overdrive. I want all Jown and Anbu in my office double time now. Dot with a nod the Anbu disappeared in a poof of smoke. Tsunade looked out of her window in the office the sun was high in the sky, a slight rainbow surrounding it. Naruto. She though as she turned to look at the picture of the Yondium. Arashi your child has grown strong he'll make a great hokage someday. While all this had happened Naruto. Had finished his 12 bowls of ramen in record time and was off practicing again getting used to his new abilities in chakra store. Alright let's try this again. Said Naruto as he threw a shuriken in front of him, running about 3 feet behind it, he went through a number of hand seals, ending with a yell of shuriken shadow clone jutsu. The jutsu worked like a charm, but Naruto didn't take into account his increased chakra store and ended up putting too much into it, the shuriken split it to hundreds of copy then thousands and blanketed the tree he had aimed at till the point where it looked like it had been painted black. Oops. Said Naruto as he sheepishly rubbed his head. In his mind the fox was once again hitting his head against the bars in the seal, he had explained this six times already. Flashback. 
It remember you chakra stores had increased greatly, so when you use jutsu, it is essential that you use less effort, or you may end up overpower the jutsu, or it could backfire and drain you of a large portion of your chakra. Okay sure dot. Said Naruto as he began to form a rasigan only to have it explode in his face, leaving him cover in scorch marks and falling to the ground slowly in an I'm style oh. That really hurt dot. Then flashback. It was the sixth time he had done this today, made a jutsu and had it explode in his face. He almost set the forest on fire, then almost flooded it trying to put it out. In short it had been a long six hours. And it's only noon. Thought the fox as he lay his aching head down in the seal. But now he was turning his mind toward a mother matter. Hmm. I wonder if she's going to stand there all day as today the day when she will work up enough courage to talk to him though the fox as he noted that Hinata's chakra signature was in the area behind a tree with some bushes. Over in said bushes behind said tree Hinata was watching in amazement, she had watched Naruto all day, well he pulled off jutsu that must have taken an incredible amount of chakra, and yet he wasn't even breathing hard. After about three more hours of watching Hinata was starting to work up her courage, but lost it when she noticed Naruto take off his shirt. Now she was fighting the battle to stay conscious as the blood rushed to her face. Okay let's try this one more time. Shouted Naruto as he pushed out both his hands and began to swirl chakra in them. As the chakra began to form into spheres it looked like everything was going good until. Kit. Watch the chakra in boom put. The spheres exploded with the force of a bomb, effectively leveling everything within 20 yards and knocking Naruto out cold. Naruto-kun. Hinata yelled from her vantage point as she made a mad dash to the blonde side and tried to wake him by shaking his shoulders, but he was out like a light and down for the count. It was at that time that she realized not only was she next to him, but that she was touching him too. So what did Hinata do? She did what any shy Hinata-like girl would. She fainted. Elsewhere. All the Jounin and Anbu were getting restless they had been called here and reported a crisis level speed, but the hookage was missing. The tension was building in the room they all knew something big was happening to be called here at the same time as the all Anbu. Kakashi was deep and thought something big was up and he had the feeling it had something to do with Naruto he just knew it. There was a short pause as Tsunade entered the room all the Jown and Anbu and even a few here and there Chunin looked to her. We have received information that Kanoha is going to be attacked within the next few hours, so we are going to immediate red alert, but we must carry this out in stealth, we don't want the villagers panicking that will give the enemy an advantage, as well as cause unnecessary deaths. There are about 100 sound ninja posted outside the village there are spilt into four squads. From what we gather this mission is to be a raid their targets are the heir of the Hyuga clan, Kakashi Heikade and. She paused mentally sighing for the oncoming onslaught of comments and yells. Dot Naruto Uzumaki. Dot the room went quiet for a few seconds before hushed voices began to spread. Others of we should have killed the demon a long time ago among other things could be heard. Tuznade's anger began to rise how stupid they were. Quiet now. I don't care what issues you may have, but you have two minutes to get over them, or have you forgotten the law still in place by the third? That shut them up quick. Now these squads are split into groups regarding their targets. We know that this mission will take place at night, so I want the streets clear by seven. She said her tone serious. We know that they are to target Hinata Hayuga first, knowing that the commotion will alert our ninja drawing out Kakashi. We know that only after this will they try to capture Naruto. We will counteract this plan while it happens we can let them invade or village and think they can get away with it. We will rally our power and strike back. Yelled the female Hokage. Hi Hokage-sama. But that all the ninja in the room disappeared leaving Tsunade and Shizun alone in the room. Glancing over at the clock Tsunade sighed only a few more hours she thought. I need a drink. Now you know that won't help. Quipped Jiraiya as he made his entrance through a window. I didn't think that Orchimaru would mobilize a retaliation this quick after last time. But whatever he is planning it is big to be going after those three. He said as he trained his eyes on the clouds through the window. What do you mean? Tsunade replied not knowing where this was headed. Think about it the Hayuga heir and Kakashi. What would Orchimaru gain from them? Tsunade's face was grim as she knew the answer Sharingan and Byakugan. But what about Naruto where did he come into play with this? What about Naruto we know Akatsuki is after the Kaiubi, but Orochimaru wants to capture Naruto now too something just isn't right here and I want to know what it is. The sun was just beginning to set and out in the training area, two people were just now waking. As Naruto was slowly coming back to the world of the waking he tried to rise off the ground but was met with some difficulty as he felt he was being pinned down. Slowly his hands came up to grasp something soft warm and smelled like lavender. What the? He opened his eyes and was greeted with the sight of long black hair Hinata. Now Hinata was off somewhere in La La Land. In her dream she was laying atop Naruto cuddling him, so it was natural that when he pulled away to sit up, she cuddled even more into his chest. 
Naruto was now starting to blush as the girl began to cuddle him, but he was also getting a good look at her. This was the first time he had been this close to Hinata, and while he looked at her he slowly taking beauty and wow Hinata is pretty. Dotty thought. As the moon came out from behind the clouds, she seemed to light up with an ethereal glow, illuminating her face and making her hair shine with silver light. As she began to stir she opened her eyes bringing them up to look at him, coupled with the moonlight she looked like a goddess to Naruto the word pretty just did do her justice. He was barely aware as he said one simple word dazedly beautiful. Dot Hinata's face lit up in a blush that Naruto could only describe as cute. Now that she was awake the full impact of what was happening came down on Hinata like a ton of bricks, she was laying on top of a bare-chested Naruto who had just called her beautiful, so that meant that her dream was. Hinata did the only thing she could think of. She fainted Dot again. Naruto was confused why did she just faint like that? Did something happen to her? Was it him? Oh well he thought as he gently moved Hinata off of him she sure was beautiful in this moonlight. Wait moonlight. His eyes shot up towards the sky, and sure enough the moon was out. Oh no he thought he would start to transform soon. His thoughts flew toward Hinata he had better get her home, and quick he didn't want her to see him transform. He moved over to her prone form and gently began shaking her. It took a little while, but she finally opened her eyes. Nar. Yudo-kun. She uttered as the blonde looked down on her and smiled hey Hinata-chan it's getting late, maybe we should head back to the village now. Hinata could only nod her head. The walk back through the forest towards the village was quiet, the only sound was the rustling of the leaves as they swirled through the cool night air. Hinata almost couldn't walk straight as her mind kept shooting back to her cuddling Naruto and then to him, calling her beautiful, her face seemed to be almost glowing red. Unbeknownst to her Naruto was going through the same ordeal and was sporting his own blush, albeit smaller each wanted to say something to end this cursed silence, but neither could bring themselves to form words with their mouths. As they keep walking the village came into sight lightening the mood a bit as Naruto looked toward the moon again only a little longer. If only Naruto knew that he and Hinata were walking into a trap. The village streets were quiet and deserted if one could see it, they might be able to catch a shadow streak across on of the rooftops. This squad a leader we have the air and the fox in our sights, we will wait for the signal, and then strike dot said the squad leader into the headcom. The voice of the elite was heard over all headsets. Now let operation leaf blower commence. As soon as that was said all sound ninja began to move into position, not knowing that they were being watched by a group of Jown and Anbu opposite of them. The Kashi looked down at the two walking the barren streets of Kanoha dammit, this just got a whole lot more complicated. He said under his breath. And they were about to get worse. A huge explosion rocked the ground and almost immediately after ninja could be seen rushing to the area. Streaking across the rooftops and squad of Anbu rushed to the scene of the explosion, we have to stop them before they get the chance to set up any more bombs. Yelled the Jounin as he began to engage with the sound ninja the clang of kunai sounded through the village as the battle began. Commander we've been ambushed, shouted the squad leader into his headset. Squads B and D engaged the enemy squads A and C continue with the mission. Naruto had no clue what was happening one second he was walking next to Hinata, the next he was in the middle of a full-scale battle, engaging a sound ninja with Hinata being engaged in battle herself, but now wasn't the time to think about that as he rushed his opponent with his kunai ducking and weaving as the blades crashed and sparks showered the area. He ducked a fist and jumped over a kick, only to be met with two more sound ninja on each of his sides, bringing up his total number of opponents to three. This wasn't going to be easy or so he thought as one of the sound ninja dropped revealing Kakashi. Kakashi sensei he yelled as he turned his attention to the copy ninja just missing a blow to the head. Naruto and Kakashi were back to back now Naruto listen carefully I want you to take Hinata and get out of here quick. Said Kakashi as he uncovered his Sharingan. But what's going on? He asked as he counter a punch being thrown from one of the opposing ninja. This is a raid their target are Yumi and Hinata. Said Kakashi deflecting a barrage of shuriken. All across the village the sound of battle rang out through the night air as Junin, Jounin and Anbu rose to tackle the threat to their village. The ground shock as another explosion went off. Jutsu flew through the air as the battle began escalating. If one could see it from the sky they would notice the different section of the battle moving in towards the middle of the village, beginning to converge on one spot. By now there were too many sound ninja for Naruto to escape with Hinata for everyone he killed two more popped up. He could feel the demon chakra in him starting to grow as he fought these were high level opponents and he didn't think that he'd be able to last much longer without drawing on the Kyubi's chakra. Hinata was having a bit of trouble herself she had never fought such high-level opponents before and was having trouble just dogging their blows. While she did manage to get in a few Jayuakin strikes here and there it was obvious that she was starting to wear down playing right into the sound ninja hands. Hinata wasn't aware that she was being separated from Naruto and Kakashi as she continued to fight with all her heart. 
Naruto and Kakashi had managed to get most of the opposing force in the area on one side, but Kakashi was surrounded. That's when an idea struck Naruto. Kakashi sensei get down. He yelled as he pulled out five shuriken throwing them in the air, going through some hand seals that Kakashi recognized. Shuriken shadow clone jutsu. Kakashi dropped to the ground as a barrage of shuriken flew over him and straight into the sound ninja that tried in vain to block the ridiculous amount of shuriken that flew at them, killing all in their way. As the bodies of the sound ninja dropped Kakashi was wide, Kakashi was shocked he had just seen Naruto use a technique that was hookage level the sheer amount of shuriken that he created, must have took an extremely large amount of chakra, a wonder he's even standing. The attack had taken out a large potion of the enemy and they are allowing for a brief few seconds for Naruto to look around, only to notice that Hinata was overpowered. Hinata. He thought as he tried to reach her. Hinata was beginning to slow-mo faced with so many opponents. Seeing this the sound commander saw this as a chance and leaped into battle with her. Keep the fox and the copy ninja busy while I take the air then retreat we cannot at this time take the copy ninja or the fox, so we will return at a later time. Yelled the elite. Hinata heard the words but was confused there was no fox around here, but the sound elite was clearly looking at Naruto as he said the word fox. Could this be some sort of nickname for him from Orochimaru? It didn't matter she thought as she prepared to fight the sound elite. I won't let you hurt Naruto-kun. Shouted Hinata as she took her Jiyuken stance all her tiredness disappearing, she would not let them hurt her Naruto-kun. With a battle roar she rushed straight at the elite ninja. For the sound elite he thought this would be an easy knockdown and take away, but this girl wouldn't give this makes no sense the Hayuga air is supposed to be only a Chunin level, but this girl fights like a demon. If I don't end this soon she may manage to land a blow with the style of hers's. Hinata pushed her chakra through her hand as it flew to towards his chest, only to hit a log and have appear him on her side striking at her shoulder with a kunai, she just barely dodged as it lightly grazed her arm. Hinata winced as the cut started to draw some blood, seeing this as his chance the sound ninja came at her head with a kick. Time slowed down as Hinata saw the foot lunging toward her it was too late to dodge it, she only had one chance left, and she hoped it worked. Pushing chakra throughout her body she began to whirl as fast as she could Katen. She yelled as the wave of spinning chakra sent the sound elite flying backward into a wall. Hinata let go of a breath she didn't know she was holding all those hours of training had paid off after all. The sound elite began to rise, he defiantly was not happy, so it would seem that you are quite strong, quite the contrary of what our reports say. I didn't think I would have to use this. At least not on you, but we have a schedule to keep, and Orochimaru-sama would be quite displeased with me if I didn't bring back at least one objective, and I can't have that happen. No that wouldn't be good at all. He said in a sinister tone Hinata got ready for the worst, but something was wrong with her visin, it looked as if the sound elite was shaking. No not shaking vibrating. There was now a dull ringing in Hinata left ear that was growing beginning to cause head splitting pain. She dropped to one knee as the sound elite nonchalantly walked over to here. This is a very special jutsu allow me to explain, the vest that I am wearing emits a very high hypersonic frequency. Normally this wouldn't be able to be heard by humans, but the sound wave have been altered in effect specifically for human ears. The sound wave is focusing on the parts of your ear that control pressure in your head. He said as Hinata began to weakly rise from her knee. Your ear normal release this pressure through special tube, but this jutsu stops that from happening, causing the pressure to build in your ears to build creating the feeling of your head about to explode. Lunging at her he punched her straight in the stomach. Hinata felt like her body was being shaken apart as high fist drew back she dropped onto her knees holding her midsection. Almost forgot about the second part oh well you just felt it. The while the vest emits high frequency sound tuned for your ears, my body is emitting a very low frequency so low that it interferes with the human body's natural frequency, in effect shaking you apart molecule by molecule, causing extreme pain. Hanada was trying to stand up, but the pressure was too much she blacked out Nah, Rudo. Kun. Hanada hit the ground. Naruto was fighting his way through the sound ninja, but they kept coming he was starting to wear down he was getting angry, and that anger hit boiling point when he saw Hanada hit the ground Hanada. He yelled as red chakra began to boil out of his skin, his whisker mark growing bolder and darker. He wheeled around to the sound ninja in front of him red eyes blazing Rasigan in hand. Those poor sound ninja. Naruto literally tore through them like paper, the last one being the unfortunate soul that received the Rasigan by now Naruto was glowing with red chakra as he ran toward the sound elite the head Hinata hoisted over his shoulder. The sound elite could feel the boy's chakra as he approached. So this is the power of the Kaiubi it's incredible, and from what we now I think it'd be in our best interest to retreat now. All forces pull back to me we have the air we cannot at this time capture the copy or the fox. He said as he jumped onto the roof of a building. All across Kanoha the sound ninja began to move toward the area where the commander was. Just as Naruto was about to leap into the air the commander pulled a kunai and placed it at Hinata's throat. 
you might not want to do that fox or else your friend here won't come out so well. Naruto froze to the spot he had to find some way to get to Hinata. The sound elite laughed as about 20 sound ninja appeared behind him, so the famous Kai Ubi is afraid we'll hurt his girlfriend what pathetic excuse for a demon fox. He cackled as the moon the moon hit the highest point in the sky and the wind began to howl. Stop right there shouted a lone Anbu as he appeared on the roof across from the group of sound ninja. By this time a few ninja were just coming into view in the distance. It was no surprise that it was Asuma, Kurinai and Guy were the first on the scene. Naruto paid no attention to the new arrivals, as only one thing was on his mind saving Hinata. The wind was now howling like a twister, as the red chakra began to increasingly notice Abel. All attention was starting to draw to the boy as his back arched, his head drew down, and he began to growl his the chakra taking the shape of a fox. A chakra tail had already become visible from his aura, but it didn't stop there in the next 30 seconds, two more chakra tails had grown out. The sheer amount of killer intent he was putting out had frozen all in the area. This boy what is he? Thought the sound elite as he tried to stay in control of his fear. Naruto could smell it. The fear he could feel coming off sound elite. The growling was getting louder almost yelling. Naruto raised his head and stared straight into the eyes of the sound elite, a fourth chakra tail erupting out of the aura. Those eyes so much anger so much malice so much. Bloodlust. This is no boy this a demon. He was vaguely aware that he was shaking as he still had Hinata hoisted on his shoulder. Bakashi watched on with eyes wide through his Sharingan he could see Naruto's chakra still building this is not good Naruto what is happening to you. Just when everything was as bad as it could get the unthinkable happened a fifth tail shot out of the aura and there was a large outburst of chakra that knocked everyone on the ground off their feet. So much chakra was coming out of Naruto now that it had form in red opaque dome over him, only the chakra tails were visible now. With all the enemy forces gone the ninja of Kanoha turned their attention the are where an extremely large chakra presence could be felt. All of Naruto friends had gathered in and were rushing towards the area. Tsunade and Jiryu were also heading towards it each thinking only one thing Naruto please be alright. The dome of chakra fluxed and a six tail popped out then a seven then a eight. The ground began to crumble away as th chakra was now forcibly weighing no only it down, but the people i the general area as well as Guy, Kakashi Kurinai and Asuma had trouble standing. Then the ninth and final tail shoot forward out of the doom. By this time Anbu began to arrive and prepare for the worst. Even the Arimateo Batausai had taken an interest in this as they watched form their perch on the fourth Hokage's head. Well I don't think Arashi expected this to happen when he sealed the fox inside the kid. Yeah, things just got a lot more interesting. Time seemed to stand still as the shrill roar of the fox echoed throughout the entire village of Kanoha, causing all of the older generation ninja's blood run cold. Inside the home of the villagers many were starting to panic that sound that. Roar. Tsunade and Jiryu were sweating as they made a full about face from the direction they were going in, as they felt the chakra from Naruto's transformation. Naruto what the hell is going on dot. Back in the square time seemed to stand still as the fox leapt into the air straight at the sound elite holding Hinata. The sound elite watched in fear as the distance gap began to close between him and the fox. He could feel the hatred the malice the pure cold and utter bloodlust rolling off the fox. Fear began to consume him, this was no boy this was not even a simple demon. This was death the cold reach of death grasping him and pulling him into the eternal darkness of oblivion. His body began to go into self-preservation mode out of pure fear he jumped away leaving his men, his mission and all the while forgetting that he held the key to his fate on his own shoulder. Th20 sound ninja that stood there couldn't move paralyzed by fear some had managed out of pure desperation to will their bodies to follow their commander. As the fox came to land on the roof the remaining sound ninja scattered about the fox, drawing any sort of weapon that they could shuriken, kunai, comma even one or two swords all few at the fox. The fox snarled as it took the time to look around. Took the time to analyze who would die first as the weapons flew at it from all direction. Its head turned toward the group of Jounin and the lone Anbu analyzing them its primal mind whirling. Pack it though as its keen eyes scanned them then to the sound ninja surrounding it and the ones fleeing enemies. Lastly he looked to Hinata. Pack. No, not pack something closer. As the weapons closed distance the sound ninja seemed to gain back some of their spine, no matter how strong this thing was, there was no way that it would be able to come out of this barrage. As they watched the ever-closing gap the fox disappeared and the weapons came together with th clang of metal. On the ground all the senior jown and watched with amazement what had happened. Where did it go? What the? Where did it go? Screamed a sound jown and as he looked around for the fox, only to drop dead as there came a sound of ripping flesh. He twisted as he fell to reveal the fox standing behind him right claw covered in blood. Bakashi almost couldn't believe it. He moved so fast I just barely caught that with my Sharingan. He though his mind traveling to when the fox was surrounded by weapons. 
though it may have seemed like it disappeared, it didn't he caught it as it swiveled its head toward them then to Ryoma on the rooftop and finally to the tent sound ninja surrounding it and the tent trying to flee. But an almost graceful swing it effortlessly glided its was through the barrage of weaponry and behind the sound ninja, as if it was a dance. One down nine to go. Make that six to go thought Ryoma as the fox's jaws closed round the neck on a sound ninja while it claws eviscerated two more. Trying to take advantage of the fox's preoccupation the other six ninja rushed straight at it weapons at the ready and subsequently all six were crushed by the tails of the fox. Somehow two managed to get up from the assault only to vaporize by a burst of red chakra from the fox as it set its sights once again on the sound elite and his underlings trying to flee. It opened its mouths and a small sphere of chakra began to swirl there. Kakashi stared at it wide-eyed Rasigan. True to its name the sphere began to spin changing from a deep blue to intense glowing purple dot taking aim, the fox launched the sphere like a cannon, it flew straight in front of the moving sound company, exploding just in front of them halting their progress. As the smoke cleared they found themselves face to face with the fox once again and it was on the offensive. Leaping at the first two on the right claws bared chakra flaring, it disappeared only to reappear on their right tearing through them like paper as its tail swiped away incoming kunai. While this was happening two more sound had launched a sneak assault. All of a sudden the fox's feet sink into the roof of the building as a solid rock spire shot throughout the torso of the fox. Upon seeing the fox impaled the sound elite immediately let out a breath he didn't know he was holding. But something was wrong the fox was dead or soon would be yet he felt as if he was still standing on death's doorstep. There was a loud poof as the fox exploded into smoke a shadow clone. Thought the elite as his head and the other eight zoomed around searching for the fox when they were alerted to the wall parallel to them. Standing on the wall like a spider about 15 feet above their heads posed and ready to strike as it looked down on them was the fox. It formed another rasigan and launched it at the eight sound ninja the resulting explosion took out all but two of the sound jounin, which were somehow able to get away from the blast and immediately started to flee, leaving the elite by himself staring in fear as the fox slowly walked down the wall, never taking its eye off him. Anada shuffled a bit in his grasp. It was then that he was brought back to the fact that he carried the girl on his shoulder as she squirmed a bit beginning to show she was coming back to consciousness. Wait the girl. He could still save his life all he had to do was use the girl. As the fox was moving towards him he moved towards the edge of the building. The fox was now in striking distance now it was time to enact his plan without a second to spare, he threw Hinata over the edge of the building and leap away in the opposite direction. The fox didn't even take the time look as it jumped off the building after Hinata. Maneuvering in the air so that she was on his back he gently wrapped two of his large bushy tails around her and pushed himself off of the wall they were so rapidly falling by. Anada was in that state that one enters between conscious and unconscious at first she felt as if she was being held by evil and darkness and now she felt as she was falling but there was something else she felt something familiar, it made her feel warm and comfortable like everything would be alright. Hinata was starting to wake up now just barely but enough to see what was going on. Now that he'd gotten Hinata the fox had one more matter of business to handle, as it landed on the roof, its eye focused in on its target the three fleeing ninja it opened its mouth and shot down the two sound jounin that it escaped earlier with Rasigan then disappeared. The sound elite was running as fast as he could, he had managed to clear five building without being taken by Anbu, and there was no sign of the fox. Or so he thought. Appearing out of nowhere stood the fox about ten feet in front of him the girl on his back. He looked eyes with the elite for a second, allowing the fear to seep back into his heart, opened his mouth and began to form a rasigan, but this rasigan was far more powerful than the others it was so strong that it glowed a dark blue as it took form. The whirling sphere of chakra kept growing it was now over triple the size of a regular rasigan about the size of basketball, all the while the fox kept his eyes locked with the sound elite, though it couldn't be heard the message was clear. He was going to kill him and there was nothing he could do about it. He could run and be hunted down he could try to fight and be massacred, but either way he was going to die. The Rasigan fired with so much force that when it hit the elite, it propelled him backward through the air over five building and straight into a wall where it promptly exploded. Now all was quiet the senior Jown and stared at the scene in front of them in the last 10 minutes they had seen a boy transform into a fox, then take out 20 sound Jown and recuse the air of one of the most powerful families in the village and blast one sound elite into oblivion. The killer intent from the fox died down as the chakra began to decrease in the area, its one slitted red eye now turned to a cool ocean blue as it hopped down from the building and walked toward the jounin, stopping about 15 feet from them. Hinata was now fully awake confused, but awake it's not every day you wake up on a giant red fox with nine tails. Looking back at the girl on his back the fox sat on his haunches allowing Hinata to effortlessly slid off his back. Bedding up again the fox turned to look at Hinata a bit before he muzzled her some. 
Hinata on her part didn't know what to make of the situation, but smiled and blushed as she let the fox muzzle her, then took a step back to look at it. To her he was beautiful crimson fur so vibrant it seemed alive nine tails swishing around slowly and an aura that made her feel safe and warm. There was something familiar about the way this fox felt it seemed so close to him right down to the ocean blue eyes. So warm and. Wait foxes don't have blue eyes and this indescribable feeling she only felt like this when she was around. Wait no it couldn't be. Naruto-kun. Hinata asked in surprise as she looked wide-eyed at the fox. Naruto looked at her blue eyes shining as they stared into her pale lavender wide eyes. Then in the next few moments things began to change. There was the sound of kunai impacting with flesh and. Pain he felt pain Naruto-kun. Hinata yelled. He looked to his side and saw ninja coming to the area from all directions they were staring at him in fear and hatred, yelling things like no, it can't be it's the kuaibi kill the demon now. Dot. His primal mind couldn't understand why he was being attacked, so pulling the out the kunai in his side with his teeth, he leapt up on top of a building. By now a small group of ninja and some villagers had made their way to the square among them were the rest of the Kanoha 11. Naruto looked down at the crowd as more kunai and shuriken came flying at him. Pain why did they wish to cause him pain? His primal mind couldn't understand it confused and heard he let out a pain roar and soared across the top of buildings with unparalleled speed straight towards the forest. Sakura Ino and the others were the first to reach the senior Jounin, witnessing the fox skipping over the rooftops. As soon as he saw them Kakashi gave immediate order all of you after that fox capture it, but do not injure it in any way, or it will be your heads. Dot taking a second to look at the path the fox had just went in they took off after it. Hinata watched as Naruto disappeared into the forest he was leaving, and she felt something. Coldness, fear of losing Naruto she didn't care if he was a fox or not, she didn't want to lose him. She dashed off right behind the others running as fast as she could. Tsunade and Jiraiya had just arrived in time to see the fox before it streaked into the forest, and now it was time to get answers. Marching up to Kakashi she looked him guy, and the rest straight in the eyes answers now dot so they began the arduous task of debriefing. On the top of the highest building, the Arameto Hitakiri looked on with a coolness that seemed out of place, considering what had just happened. Interesting so it would seem that Naruto has transformed I wonder what will happen next. We'll worry about that later little brother tomorrow they will be attacked again, but this time they know it, so let's give them a hand eh? Works for me. With that one disappeared as the image of a log floated in air for a second, while the other jumped off the building and streaked across the rooftops with unparalleled speed, invisible to the eyes of all. Okay split up into your teams. Yelled Shikamaru as they passed throughout the wood and blur as Shino you come with me, Ino and Chaoji your bugs will come in handy for tracking. Sakura you're with Kiba scent as troublesome as he is Naruto's not here try and track the fox's scent. Niji. He didn't have to say more as Niji had already activated his Byakugan and had Lee and Tenten following. Report back to this or when you found something if you don't find anything in three hours report back here so we can mobilize a larger search team. Hi. Came the collective yell as each team split off in three different directions. Hinata had gotten a late start in following them, so she was farther behind than the others and had no idea where they had gone off to. She jumped through the tree activating her by Akigen, searching for any sign that might give her a clue. In her near 360 degree range of vision she saw that each they had split up into three teams and were heading in opposite directions. Hinata had no clue where to go so she did the simplest thing one can do she followed her heart. Niji Lee and Tenten jumped from tree to tree scanning, searching for any sign of the giant fox they had saw bringing up the questions. Hey Lee what do you think that thing was back there anyway? Asked a weapons master as she recalled the recent event. I do not know teammate, but I think it may have been a fox of some kind. Answered the Tejustu master. Yeah but a fox with nine tails and the size of it. I've never seen a fox that big it was bigger than Kiba's dog. If we do find it how are we going to catch it without harming it? Dot she asked as they move along the branches now leaving the village territory. I do not know Dottie began, but the flames of our youth burn strong and will see us through. Shouted Minnie the guy causing Tenten to sweat drop, thought it couldn't be seen Niji to frown. We won't be catching this fox. At all it is likely that we may encounter it, but capturing it with or without harming it is out of the picture, and I believe you now why he said without looking back Lee and Teton gravely nodded their heads. It was clear as day to the high Uga this fox whatever it was was strong really strong, considering how much chakra was coming off of it as it leaped across the roofs in the village. There might be a chance that they could capture it if it was Shikamaru's team that caught up with it first, considering the Nara's ability to manipulate shadows, but that hope was dashed as he caught something moving about a kilometer ahead of them. It was the fox. Tenten and Lee immediately noticed the Hyuga prodigy tense as they moved closer to him seeking info. The fox is ahead of us by half a mile, now we will attack from three side in a tri-formation. The fox had no clue it was being followed so it had stopped running and now looked out at the moon. 
Niji checked they were downwind of the target he signaled Lee who signaled Tenten everything was going to plan, maybe they would be able to capture this thing after all, thought Tenten with a smile. Unbeknownst to them the fox had already caught their scent, and even before that it heard them following, now it waited for them to pounce. The moon was temporally clouded over turning the small clearing into a dark chilling patch of forest. Slowly they waited all of them waiting for the single moment that would decide their fate, as the cloud began to pass the moon once again bathing the clearing in its ethereal glow. The seconds ticked by like hours each growing longer and longer, as the three chunin moved slowly into positions around the fox, each hoping each wishing each praying. A cricket chirped a spider struck a trap was sprung. Poof a puff of smoke was all that was left. What the hell happened? Said Tenten. I do not know my comrade said Guy J.R. Niji couldn't believe it. It just wasn't possible it couldn't have be. The fox tricked us it was a shadow clone, Niji said in his disheveled state Tenten, and Lee turned their heads toward him a shadow clone. They asked also disheveled by the experience they had been following a clone for Kami, knows how far away form Kanoha the mere thought made Tenten want to scream. Niji had trouble believing it himself as he recalled the trap. They had sprung swiftly from their areas Tenten launching shuriken at the fox's feet, while Niji and Lee made a move with a double wire shuriken net, effectively trapping the fox, or so they thought as it disappeared in a puff of smoke. Niji survived his team Lee was say something or other about the flames of youth, while Tenten was about to pull her hair out, so being Niji he took charge. Fate has dealt us a foul hand, let us help the other fare better. With that said he motioned for his teammates to follow him as they began the long journey back to the rend of this point. Elsewhere. Kiba duck. Yelled Sakura as the fox's tail slammed into the tree where he was standing. Kiba had managed to duck just in time as the tail of the fox flew over his head. The fox turned its attention back to Akamara now as the giant dog stood growling behind him. Whipping one of its tails about his muzzle, he threw the giant dog down on the ground in front of Kiba. Sakura sighed this had been going on for quite some time, it was as if the fox was playing with them not really trying to hurt them. The fox stood looking at Kiba and Akamaru as they got up off the ground, its muzzle showing a full set of teeth that could have been mistaken for a grin, its eyes lighting up, as if saying oh did you fall down. Dot. Aye it was mocking him Kiba didn't know how, but he knew it, this fox was mocking him. The strange thing was that whenever Sakura tried to fight it, it would back away like she had the plague or something, giving her a look of anger as it growled and snarled at her. This ends now. Thought Sakura as she focused her chakra into her hands. She struck the ground like earthquake sending a tremor of jagged earth as the fox which disappeared into a puff of smoke on contact, leaving Sakura flabbergasted and Kiba and Akamara matter, than they were before. A shadow clone. What the hell was this thing taking lessons from Naruto? And damn him where is he anyway? Ah. Yelled the frustrated dog boy. Akamara walk over to him master, and in that strange barking grunting began to talk to him. Yeah yeah I smelled it too, but there is no way Akamaru. Sakura turned her head from the immense crater she had just created looking at Kiba with a question look. Kiba noticing the blank stare began to explain Akamaru says the fox smelt like Naruto the whole time we were fighting. But I am saying that's impossible because Naruto isn't here the baka. Dot Sakura turned away she hadn't forgotten about the failed mission a few day earlier, and the promise he made the promise he didn't keep the promise she would not forgive him for. Let go back. She said her voice dull with a hint of underlying anger that startled Kiba as she walked past making him turn to Akamaru was it something I said. Dot. The fox jumped to the left to dodge the mass of rolling flesh that was Chouji's jutsu trying to run, but being blocked by the extremely large swarm of destruction bugs, landing right into a trap set by Shikamaru. God you said the lazy Nara as he ensnared the fox in his shadow possession jutsu. You know you're on. He yelled to the blonde girl as she made the hand signs for her trademark jutsu. Mind transfer jutsu. Everything was going smooth until then, as soon as her mind made contact with the fox, it was like turning on a cable STV. The resound poof blew her back to her mind, leaving everyone confused. This is so troublesome. It had been three hours since they all had left back in Kanoha Kakashi, and the other Jounin had just finished their report when the entire team appeared behind him. Tsunade was on the like flies to a kill. Did you find the fox? She asked nearly running Sakura over. No sensei she said as she hung her head seeing this as a chance to explain Shikamaru's step up and began to talk to the frantic hokage the fox duped us, he said in his trademark lazy tone, stifling a yawn. Tsunade looked at him a vein beginning to bulge in her head, but before she could vent the anger, Sakura stepped up to stop her sensei. We split up into teams to try and track it, but we only found clones, and she proceeded to tell the rest of everyone's encounters with the fox to Tsunade. As she finished Tsunade was rubbing her temples, this was not good not good at all, from what she heard from Kakashi Naruto had ran away when he had been attacked by the village ninja, after saving Hinata. Wait Hinata. Didn't she go with them where was she? Oh no. Tsunade felt a headache coming on. Where is Hinata? 
she asked receiving blank stares no 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 no, that means she's still out there chasing the fox this caused Niji to jump into immediate action, he was just about to turn around when the entire group found themselves surrounded by the entire Anbu black oops. Find the girl and the fox bring them back at all cost use of force is not authorized against the fox, it's an ally regardless of what some of you might think. If harm comes to the fox the consequences will be harsh and carried out with the utmost of severity is that clear. Hi ho Kajama. And then they were gone like they were never there turning back to the group of Chunin before her she addressed them. You all go home and get some rest that is in order especially Yuniji. Don't worry I'll handle this and Ada will be fine I will talk with Asahi momentarily. There was an old saying that popped into Tsunade mind speak of the devil, and he will appear for as soon as she finished that sentence no other than said clan leader appeared and he did not look happy at all. Hokage-sama I have heard what has happened here, and he was cut off as Tsunade looked at him with a glare that could cut stone. Meet me in my office in 10 minutes she said to him. You all are dismissed. Five minutes later Hisashi stood in front of Tsunade's desk what do you mean she went after the Kuaibi? He yelled in rage as Tsunade narrowed her eyes one you will restrain yourself Asahi Hayuga, and two this fox is not a demon, nor is it the Kaiubi if anything you should be thanking it for rescuing not only your daughter, but keeping your Kekai Genkai safe as well. No harm will come to your daughter. No if you will excuse me I have work to do and must prepared for the next attack. She said all of this coolly whiles, she stacked papers on her desk. Hasahi was more than anger now we'll see what the village council has to say about this. He muttered as he walked out the door. As soon as he was out Tsunade let her head hit the desk today was not a day, and the icing on the cake, the cherry and whipped cream, was that Naruto had transformed into some giant super nine-tailed fox and ran off with the air of one of the most important ninja clans in hot pursuit, yep it was official today sucked. Badly. The only thing that made it worse was the information she had received upon the capture of one sound ninja it would appear this was a preemptive raid and a full force strike would occur tomorrow. At least they had the info on where she just hoped that Naruto would be back by then. Naruto ran through the trees of the forest, as if the wind he knew he was still being followed by one, but his mind was still on flight, get as far away from those who would hurt him as possible. Hinata was starting to catch up to him as she jumped through the branches. Naruto was now starting to speed up making the gap between the two larger, he could sense her movement slowing she was tiring. Hinata's mind was in a state whirlwind as she saw Naruto 4 moving ahead, it was as if part of herself was being torn out of her tears started to pool in her eyes. The thought of never seeing Naruto again was just too much Naruto please don't leave don't leave me alone. She said as she watched him come to slow stop. He turned and looked at her he knew her she was the one he had saved. But he had to get away, away from the thus that would hurt him. He turned around and slowly began to walk away with her still a good 30 feet from him. Anada's head was swirling as the prospect of Naruto not being there fully hit her she tripped on a branch and fell to the ground. As she took one last look at Naruto's retreating form she whispered, please don't go Naruto-kun please and broke out into full-blown tears, she didn't even notice that the fox had come to a stop. Naruto looked back she was crying why. He couldn't understand it, she was she sad to see him go. His primal mind just couldn't process it. But she looked so sad. Anada was crying her heart out Naruto was gone, she felt like her world had just collapsed, he was the person who made her smile he was her inspiration he was. He was gone. She didn't notice it at first, but there was something muzzling her head something warm it made her feel comfortable and safe, she leaned into it a bit more, then she remembered where she was and what was going on her eyes snapped open and she resisted the urge to squeak. She found herself staring into those beautiful ocean blue eyes again for the third time this night. She couldn't speak she couldn't even breath as the tears continued to stream down her face. Gently a large tails came up her cheeks whipping the tears away. The joy the happiness had overwhelmed her and she lunged out at the fox wrapping her arms around it neck crying into his shoulder, she didn't care if he was a boy or a fox all she cared about was that he was here with her now. But alas this is Hinata we're talking about here. Hinata's face lit up with a luminous blush as she released Naruto looking down as she twiddled her fingers Naruto on his part was confused what was wrong. Thank you for not leaving Naruto-kun she said still looking at the ground. To Naruto she still seemed sad, so he thought of something that might cheer her up. Even though his mind was running on primal mode he remembered something, something that might cheer her up. He sat down and tucked his front paws on the ground he was chest level with Hinata now, as she watched him gesture his shoulders forward. Huh? You want me to get on? With a nod of his head Hinata walked over to him and let out a gasp as she was lifted by two of his tails onto his back, she could have sworn she saw him smirk at that. Naruto stood up slowly rising off the ground and began to trot forward in a leisurely pace, then started running Hinata held on tight as the tree she to blur at their pace the all of a sudden Naruto jumped. Hinata held on even tighter than before as they ascended above the treetops high into the air, giving her a wonderful view of the moon as they seemed to float back down. 
They landed on the tip of a tree and were off, Naruto was skipping off the very surface of the canopy it was like magic. They moved like this for some time before dropping back onto the forest floor. Naruto slowed down as the trees were getting less dense and the moonlight more prominent. Hinata didn't say anything at all she just waited to see where Naruto had taken her. In front of them was a small river it looked deep, she noted as Naruto walked to it, gently stepping onto its surface, as Chakra came to his four feet, allowing them to glide across, if it was nothing as the moon clouded over. On the other side the trees became even less dense until they were gone completely. It was dark as Naruto walked out into the open for a while, then stopped as the moon came out from behind the clouds, allowing Hinata to gasp in surprise at the scene before them. They were standing in a large meadow that went on for as far as the eye could see and was bordered by large snow-capped mountains. There was a large pond in the center of it a small island in the middle with little mini islands surrounding it, and as the moon's light shone down on it, moonflowers of all kinds and colors began to bloom a light breeze making them sway delicately back and forth. Naruto-kun it's beautiful she said as she slid off of his back steeping out into the meadow twirling a little. She looked beautiful in the moonlight surrounded by white moon flowers. A lunar goddess he though as his eyes watched her as she danced and spun through the meadow, his mind going away from earlier thoughts. She seemed happy to him now and that was all that was important he thought as he looked towards the moon his lunar goddess was happy. The moon was high in the sky as fifteen blurs moved throughout the spiraling forest. Instantly they stopped as all came to a clearing. Why have you stopped pursuit Tashi? Asked one of the masked figures. It's this damn order I don't see why the Hokage want us not to kill this demon. I don't care if it's an order or not I kill it myself. He roared before a fist connected with his head and he found himself being pummeled into a tree. Ryoma stood over him as he looked up into his fierce eyes. How dare you? Jiriya-sama and I owe our lives to that so-called demon as well as you and the rest of this squad. Dot Ashi couldn't speak as Ryoma walked away, but not before making his point adamantly clear, if you lay a finger on Naruto, I'll kill you myself before Tsunade-sama gets the chance. With that he disappeared in the forest in a blur. As Tashi stood up he found himself the target of many glares. Unlike most other Anbu squads this one was an elite made up of veteran ninja, ninja, who knew the secrets of Konoha well, including those about Naruto. Q secret, Gardenbi Madoka. The Nada lay spiraled out in the meadow as a warm night zephyr blew across the fields, Naruto lay on his haunches not far away. This place is was so peaceful here she had almost forgotten about her near-death experience only a few hours earlier, now replaced by this magical place Naruto had taken her to. Said Fox was enjoying the warm breeze as it ruffled his crimson fur, and if Anada had been closer, she would have heard the low rumbling, that could have been mistaken for a purr. She turned to look at the him noticing that for the first time she could remember he seemed totally at peace. It may have had something to do with being a fox or something, but the look on his face was not one of his goofy happiness, but one of utter peace and serenity. It was a part of Naruto she had never seen before. Well the whole transforming into a fox thing either, but this was different. This meadow was a special place for him a place where he could be at peace free from being a ninja, free from the harsh words of the villagers she had heard thrown at him, free from everything, and he had shared it with her. Her eyes widened in thought as she played it back in her mind again. This was his special place, a magical place of such peace and beauty that he alone knew about. And he had shared it with her. She felt a tear come to her eye as she felt her heart fill up with joy. He willingly brought her to his secret garden. Hinata wished this night would never end as another warm zephyr blew across them, she could stay here forever. Her eyes began to close as she let the warm breeze lull her into sleep. She was awoken some time later by the soft nudging of her arm. When she opened her eyes she was greeted with those beautiful blue oceans that could only belong to Naruto. Hinata began to blush as she sat up and let out a yawn it was still night time, but the moon had gone from view, so it was probably about two or three hours till sunrise. As she stood up she noticed Naruto was crouching again his eyes looking at her causing yet another blush to rise to her feature, as she interpreted the gesture, it was time to go, and he wanted her to get on. As she stepped up to him she stifled another squeak as she felt two tails wrap around her waist, picking her up off the ground and placing her on his back, blushing all the way. Even if Naruto-kun has transformed into a giant fox, I still can't find my vice when he's around. Once on in stable Naruto rose to stand height and began move towards the forest in a leisurely trot. Hinata turned back to get one last look at the beautiful scene. She felt sad at the prospect of leaving, Naruto who picked up on this feeling swiveled his head to look back at Hinata. He made a motion with his head towards the meadow then towards her it took a few seconds, but Hinata picked up the message with a smile, he would bring her back her whenever she wanted, but she couldn't tell anyone else about this place this was their secret. She felt the familiar weightless sensation as Naruto jumped onto the tip of a tree and began tree skipping as she had dubbed it, away. 
it was getting close to dawn when Naruto dropped through the canopy onto the forest floor with Hinata still on his back, from here on out, it would take about an hour to get back to Konoha at this leisurely pace Hinata didn't mind, though she was enjoying the early morning walk. Everything was quiet and peaceful until Naruto stopped walking crouched down and started to growl at something in less than 5 seconds, they were surrounded by the 15 Anbu. Naruto was on edge now and Hinata was scared as to what was happening, what were the Anbu going to do to Naruto. The whole situation would have escalated into something really nasty if Ryoma hadn't stepped forward and removed his mask fixing his brown eyes on the blue ones of Naruto. Calm down Naruto it's me Ryoma we're not here to hurt you, or Hinata calm down. Hinata, sensing that Naruto was still a bit distrustful began to talk to him, it's okay Naruto come they not here to hurt us. But that said Naruto began to cease his growling calming down, much to the surprise of the other Anbu. Now that that all was out of the way Ryoma got back to business Naruto and Hinata, we were sent to escort you to the Hokage's tower, so if you will follow us now. And they were off just as simple as that, though you'd imagine that anyone who would have saw an Anbu squad and a giant nine tailed with a girl on its back leaping through trees would have been highly disturbed. They had just reached the village border when Naruto stopped running and came to a complete halt. Naturally this caused everyone to stop. He lifted Hinata off his back with his tails and slowly began to sink to the ground as bright blue chakra completely covered him and rolling off as if steam to reveal him now back in human form and unconscious. Hinata was about to run over to him, but Ryoma beat her there as he hefted Naruto onto his back and leaped away into the village she hesitated for a few seconds before continuing on her way. The streets of Konoha were still asleep as the sun was just rising bringing light to the darkness and illuminated the village. All was quiet there was not as trace as to the event of the previous night, only a slight scent of burning wood, as if there had been a fire. After the quick journey to the tower Ryoma entered first with Naruto still out cold on his back. As he exited he made a turn in another direction carrying Naruto with him as Hinata was ushered into the Hokage's office. Hinata was nervous as she entered the Hokage's office she had not met the Hokage before and had no idea what was going on as she found herself alone with Tsunade after the Anbu had been dismissed. Tsunade eyed the young girl as she sat in the chair fidgeting her fingers. So this is the girl who has the crush on Naruto. Hmm. Sakura wasn't kidding when she said that she had it in for him bad. Putting on her serious I am the Hokage face Tsunade began to address Hinata. Hinata do you know why you are here? Shaking her head no Tsunade continued. Let us cut straight to the point okay. Last night Naruto transformed into a giant fox and as you already know saved you a good portion of our people. Hinata it is imperative you tell no one about this it's a S-class secret. You probably want to know why Naruto has gone through this change, I myself don't know why, but I am sure it has to do with his past. I cannot tell you about it as it is now a triple S class secret, but when Naruto decides to tell you then it means he trusts you enough to keep his secret. Hinata froze at this, what secret could Naruto's past hold that was so classified? Tsunade smirked now that the important doom and gloom stuff was out of the way she could have some fun. Hinata when the village was attacked last night there was an order for all people to be off the streets by 7. So what were you and Naruto during all that time that you missed that order him? Asked Tsunade with a devilish grin on her face. That brought an instant blush to Hinata's cheeks as she remembered waking on Lei on Naruto. She tried to stutter out an answer, but Tsunade wasn't finished playing with her yet. In addition to that it would seem that you were with Naruto for some time after he changed. At this point Hinata began to go into full face blush at what Tsunade was implying, as memories of flying across the tree tips and the beauty of the secret garden flashed across her mind, then she felt herself getting dizzy. Tsunade smirked again as she looked at the girl it was no small secret she had a crush on the boy and there was no doubt that they were together when this whole mess happened, but she still had to know what happened, not because she was the Hokage, but simply because she was interested in this little romance. Damn was she evil. After telling Tsunade the whole story, save on how to get to the secret garden Hinata now sat twiddling her thumbs in full body blush while Tsunade sat there truly shocked. Hinata the whole tone of her voice had changed now it was more serious and held a hint of sadness to it. Naruto is a truly amazing person he has many he considers precious to him, but he lets few truly into his world. Hinata Naruto has had a hard path in life and still does for him to let you into his world like last night means he must really trust and care about you a lot. You're in love with him it's plain to see, that's why you were able to find him when no one else was you followed your heart. Whether you know it or not, Naruto has let you into his world and shown you something so precious to him that he kept it secret just for himself. Not even I had known about this and he's like a little brother to me. This secret garden it's a special place a place where Naruto is free from the shackles of reality, free from the hurt and shun of the villagers, free from the way of the shinobi, free from all the world worries. It's a place where Naruto can truly be as himself. He's at peace there just as you described, for him to take you there and trust you with his secret is all but amazing. 
Anada he has shown you his true self you may not realize it now, but you will one day. Anada just sat there as she soaked up all that she had been told, did Naruto really care for her that much? As she was dismissed by Tsunade she paused as one last piece of advice made it to her ears Hinata, what Naruto has shown you keep a secret, even if threatened with death. Naruto truly must care about you deeply to show you that side of himself, don't ever let your mind cloud that image of him, especially when you learn the truth about his past, don't ever break the image of the true Naruto, for that would break him too. Nodding her head Hinata left the room heading for home she needed to rest and reflect upon all that she had been told. As she watched Hinata go Tsunade let her thoughts go out keep trying Hinata, even if you don't know it you're closer to your goal than you think. Heading up from her position at her desk Tsunade left the office and rounded the corner. As she walked along the dismal pathway she led her sight straight towards the village which she protected, quiet and peaceful, no clue of the conflict that was soon to take place outside its walls. Sighing again she turned a corner walked down a hallway and entered a room, allowing a light smile to grace her features. Naruto was spiraled out in her bed sleep like nothing in the world could wake him, it was almost cute. Hokage-sama she was broken from her train of thought as a lone Anbu appeared behind her, we have scout the area and are readying to launch a surprise attack on the enemy forces. Her eyes sharpened. Tell our forces to form on the enemy and prepare to attack in waves, I will be there shortly. With a nod of the head the Anbu disappeared. Giving one last look to Naruto Tsunade smirked sleep well Naruto after last night you deserve it. With that she disappeared off to the battlefield where surprises were in order for all. All was still as the wind blew across the field, it was as if time was still itself. Tsunade did not like the situation at all they had met up the enemy forces, but in doing so they had forced both sides into an undesirable battle area. The field in which they stood was wide and open no cover, except for the few boulders, small mountains and cliffs in the background. To make matters worse they were at a standstill. While they had managed to sneak up on the enemy any attack would alert them to their presence and make this a very long and drawn out battle. Now it was a waiting game to see who would attack first. On the bad side they were outnumbered 100 to 200, but all that soon would not matter because on the good side two young men were making their way, thought the ranks talking rather loudly. I'll take the ones on the left you take the ones on the right Lee Dot said the one who was slightly taller by a few inches. He was clad in traditional ninja garb and footwear sword on his back, along with some sort of baton, around his waist was a black belt with many pockets and another baton this one shorter. His entire outfit was black save for his vest which was also in traditional ancient style, and part of his mask which were blue, think Sub-Zero. On his back there was a white symbol that resembled a bird in flight, but only the head with a red eye and part of the wings were visible, this symbol was also viable on the left side of his vest in the front. His plain grey scarf came halfway down his back, and his deep blue eyes shone like the ocean itself as a single scar down his left cheek was the only thong that marred his no doubt handsome face, overall he looked to be about 18 and stood about 6-0. Works for me Kai said his campion who was clad in A. It was no doubt he was a samurai for around his waist he wore the daisho, lit. Big and small. He was clad in a light green bodysuit that separated at the waist with a black belt where his swords were attached with the addition of a large steel kunai with a hole in the center attached to a chain on his left hip, think scorpion spear from MK Deadly Alliance. He wore a vest similar to the one his campion wore, except his was gold and very thick like a mower, on his back there was a symbol etched in green that looked like a bird in flight, with its wings stretched high upward to almost a curl. Instead of sandals he wore battle boots that had a gold lining on them, as the wind blew it picked up his gold scarf that came down almost to his feet. His unkempt black hair ruffled as the wind blew his dark jade green eyes sparkled like lightning, on his right cheek there was a large cross scar that seemed out of place on a face that could be described as perfect, overall he stood about 5'9 and looked to be 17. Both warriors had one thing in common, though the symbols on each of their backs were inside of a larger symbol. It was a square tuned on its axis with a streak right before each corner, a clan symbol. As they continued to walk though the leaf ninja as if there wasn't a major battle about to occur. Thought their actions caused most of the younger ninja to question their sanity, those that were older began wiping their eyes to see if they were dreaming, some going so far as to make kai signs with their hands to make sure this was not a jinjutsu. As they continued their walk to the front line passing the crouching leaf ninja they spotted Tsunade, who was consulting with three Anbu squad captains, Kakashi and Juriya. As Tsunade spoke to the captain she caught movement out of the corner of her eyes it can't be. She thought as the two figures began to walk past her. A few of the younger ninja began to get up and try and stop these two who obviously were crazy, only to be stopped by Tsunade herself. Stand down. She shouted looking at them with fire in her eyes. But Hokage-sama they one began before he caught the look on her face. Noting that they were still tense one of the Anbu captains approached them and removed his mask, showing a face that had seen many battles, but still held the look of a common middle-aged man. Don't you know who they are? 
He asked with an underlying insinuation in his questioning tone. Looking upon the young faces that stood before him he shook his head no, I guess they wouldn't would they? They're all too young to remember them. Dot. As the two figures walked out into the open field of view of the sound ninja Tsunade spoke up, they are the ones of legend and ninja that transcend space and time, and the samurai that bridges the Tarth and Heaven's Gate. Kai Kasu and Lee Kasu the Arameto Hitakiri. Tsunade said as she began recounting an ancient legend. Long ago when demons still walked the earth freely and wars were commonplace among the lands there existed two warriors descended from celestial blood, whose power was so great that they were feared across the land. A dragon in the form a swordsman of such strength that the world itself trembled whenever he welded his sword, so great was his power that he was said to bridge the heaven's gate to earth with his power. His brother Wolf who took the form of a ninja, possessed such power that he part the very fabric of time and transcends space at his whim. Each able to slay an army of 10,000 with a single attack, their eyes glowed like the very creature they were, their wrath and darkness to be feared by all. With their power they helped to bring about an end to the days of demon terror and war, foraging the five strong nations new future bring about a new era in peace. A.N. I'll provide all history on them later. Now the two stood before them about to let all those around glimpse their legendary power firsthand. Those poor sound ninja. Who at the moment were attacking into waves of 100 from either side. Their plan had been simple they outnumbered the enemy and attacking from both sides to wear down their defense while using the natural cover provided by the field seemed to be a good plan. If only those two kids hadn't given away their position the enemy might have had a chance. I held his arm straight out to the left, he decided to trim their numbers a bit just so they'd know what they were up against. In an instant the level of chakra he was putting out without any effort caused both sides to focus their eyes upon him. You could see the chakra pouring into his arm the light of it was almost blinding, to accumulate that much chakra was utterly jaw-dropping even a cage couldn't call up that much chakra and make it look so effortless. The killer intent that irradiated was so intense it made some of the leaf ninja loose their stomachs. As the chakra began to form a ball in his left hand, he turned his eye towards the sound ninja. Hunter wolf jutsu he yelled thrusting the ball of chakra forward where it took on the shape of a huge wolf snarling and growling as it tore its way across the ground toward the sound fleet where upon impact it tore through 15 and when it exploded it took out 65, not to mention the mountain. Behind them. Don't you think that was a bit overkill Kai? Asked Lee as he surveyed the damage then at that exact moment caught a kunai intended for the back of his head without looking as the large explosive tag went off. Boom. As the smoke cleared Lee stood there unscathed and unfazed. Suddenly he was pulsating with a strange force that wiped the chakra form the surrounding area. Dissolving it away. On second thought. He whipped a round raised sword above his head and brought it down, issuing forth a mountainous crescent arc of wide energy that speed towards the second company, utterly decimating all but twenty of them as well leaving a very deep crescent-shaped gorge in the ground. Oh, and some mountain rubble. Now what was that you were saying about overkill? Asked Kai. Upon witnessing the utter destruction of the enemy force, Juri almost fell face first to the ground. All those years and they're still just as powerful as before. Now if you were a sound ninja you were a scared shitless and wanted to retreat. Be wondering what the bloody blue hell hit you. See dead. Or for the really stupid ones d. Preparing to attack thinking you enemy used all their energy with those two attacks. An. Hum I wonder which they are. Cough d. Cough. Grossly outnumbered and faced with the possibility of death the remaining sound ninja had to make a choice retreat and face Orochimaru or face death at the hands of the legendary Hidakiri and Kanoha ninja. It was an easy choice to make. They ran headlong to their deaths. Upon reaching 100 yards of the two warriors the first two came to a stop. They eyed the two warriors over a bit smiling as they did so. So you two are the legendary Hidakiri eh? The strongest in the world. Well this will give yous the chance to test our power against you. Dot these two were obviously the strongest out of the bunch because they began to draw up an ungodly amount of chakra vibrating as they did so, and then they disappeared. The ground around Kai shook with explosions, but he had already moved only to be caught in the next explosion, Lee just stood their eyes glued forward. So they're using a new type of battle side, eh? Well it pretty strong as Rig Waller standards go, but it stll pales in comparison to us as thought the smoke cleared Kai was revealed to be fine without a scratch on him, as the two sound ninja appeared about 30 feet in front of Lee. So how do you like our supersonic speed jutsu? It's so fast not even the famed Arameto Hitakiri can keep up with us. Lee just smirk you young hotshots are always such fools. Sure you were moving fast alright, but you haven't even thought your plan through you're just showing off you power. You have no sense of honor your only gala to attain power, and that will be your downfall. Oh and just in case you wanted to now you're actually pretty slow. He said as if it was the plainest thing in the world, which in turn greatly pissed off said young hotshots. 
They disappeared again now their target was Lee who was still standing still as a statue eyes glued forward as they ran around him in all directions. They circled him about six time before finally coming to a conclusion. He's used up so much energy he can't even move. The legendary samurai is about to fall at our hands, I never expected him to be so weak that after one attack, he'd just stand there. He can't even see us we move so fast. Our supersonic speed surpasses that of even legend truly we are ek. It happened so fast no one save Kai saw it, without moving an inch or batting an eye, Lee's arms shot out to each of his sides at different angles, each hand firmly grasping a ninja neck lifting, said ninja up in the air. At that moment any sound ninja with hope in their mind was brought harshly back to reality, this was the Arameto Hitakiri they were up against. Lee shook his head as he tightened his grip around the neck of his captive in his left hand which effectively snapped his neck, whereupon death he flung him like a wet rag at least 30 feet through the air. Then he brought his gaze to his other captives, eyes who upon seeing his eyes, wish it had been him that had died. Lee's unusual green eyes were now a light orange and slightly glowing. It was a terrifying sight. It was like looking into your death. Into a dragon's eyes. There was no murderous intent as there was this his brother, but something else was there coupled with those horrifying eyes. It was like you were facing a force you could never even hope to beat, and you knew it. Everything fiber of his being and his mind was screaming at him to run, but he couldn't move. Juria, Tsunade and all the other ninjas could feel this power, and it was scary. And what's more it was dissolving their chakra. One of the Anbu next at Tsunade had taken off his mask and was in cold sweat. Okajama what in the name of Kami is this force, I've never felt such. Such. I can't even describe it. Tsunade paused for a few seconds dot at Sakai, Samurai speared. There are many samurai around the ninja nations, but there aren't many true samurai, so it's natural that you haven't experienced this force yet. Samurai unlike ninja do not use chakra they use the energy of the soul. To try and define the samurai spirit is impossible for a ninja, but it is given the same term for soul energy, but is an entirely different thing altogether. I've experienced it before but this but never on this level before. An. I will go into detail later. You made four crucial mistakes in this fight. Your first was assuming what you didn't know and revealing your jutsu. Second using your jutsu at the beginning of battle. A jutsu like that burns through chakra like a fire through paper. Third you got cocky. And last he said closing his eyes for a moment, then snapping them wide open again, don't he ever underestimate me. He roared as he cocked back his arm and threw the hapless ninja with the force of a battleship cannon straight at a mountain. Like a missile the ninja flew at least half a mile before crashing going straight into one of the mini mountain on the battlefield, crushing it to pieces and still managing to continue out the back a little. Fools mutter Kai as he turned his he turned his once blue, but now blazing lime yellow eyes at them the killer intent he radiated was so strong the very grass he stood upon died. Lee had now joined in as his piercing orange eyes laid upon them, his sockeye seeming to skyrocket to the point where looking at him made them freeze like deer in the headlights. The full magnitude of these two was incredible they were the Arameto Hitakiri. What in the name of all things good had they been thinking going up against them? These were the warriors of legend said to transcend time and shake the very earth. Run. Run run. The words course their mind's fear was taking over. Those eye those demonic glowing eyes the power the sheer force it was suffocating. The will of the sound ninja was no more they didn't even know why they had come here in the first place the fear of Orchimera was gone, even he was as nothing when compared with the just the raw force of being of these two and those eyes. Those eyes were the most haunting thing about them it was worse than being under a microscope, it was like the were searching examining prodding at their very souls. The cloud covers the sun, a bird chirps, the wind blows. At the split instant the sun is uncovered they all turn to run, but are stopped when they turn around, only to come face to face with what they are trying to escape only this time they're closer. There is no escape says Lee emphasizing on the no. The trees rustle, the leaves fall, a butterfly takes flight. The sound ninja in the front line cracks under the pressure and runs headlong towards the two warriors kunai at the ready, he is cut down by Lee so fast the only visible motion is the blood spray, as the sword is returned to the sheath. All save for five try to run once again. I pulled out his blue baton off his back as it lengthens into a bow staff Lee draws his sword in mere seconds they are all dead. The last five are so beyond fear that they each simply fall to their knees broken completely. As Kai walked up to them his eye began to revert back to their normal blue Lees having gone back to their normal but unusual shade of green as the imposing force dissipates. I eyed the five broken ninja. He raises two fingers and from his body come five strands of chakra that wrap around their wrists, chakra cuffs. Next both Lee and Kai turn their heads toward the now scared shitless leaf ninja and make their way over to them, who were thanking every deity they could think of that they were on their side. As they approached Tsunade who was still a bit dazed, Lee did the only thing he could think of to snap her back to reality he made a joke. Long time no see, eh kid? Bingo. 
Uznade snapped like a pulled rubber band both fist at the ready she thrust them forward towards both of their face I am not a kid she screamed, only to have a fist caught in each hand, the strength from the blow shattered the ground behind them. A man still got that temper I see. Said Kai with a Naruto-like grin much to the embarrassment of Tsunade, who realized what she had just done and in front of her subordinates. She lit up with such a blush it could have made Hinata proud. Said subordinates tried to hold back the laughter as snickers and stifled laughs could be heard quite clearly. They were doing better than Jiria who had fallen to the ground and was rolling in pain from laughing so hard. After the laughter died down Kai to a fleeting glance back at the four sound nin. What are they for? Asked Tsunade gesturing to the bound ninja. Information. Each one of them is an elite, so it might be good to interrogate them for ant further attack plans and such. They'll tell you everything you want to know. Oh and take the forehead protectors after this, they will never have the will to fight ever again. With that said he and Lee began walking away which puzzled Tsunade. We'll talk later about our little visit Tsunade. Said Lee taking the question right off her lips. But where are you going? She asked trying to get at least that out of them. They stopped walking we're going to visit Naruto, said Lee as he turned around his eyes sharpening. We do hope the village has taken good care of him. For your sake. Said Kai as his eyes sharpened, they were not happy at all. But that Kai raised two finger and disappeared, the image of a log floating in air for a second afterwards, and Lee took off towards the village with such speed that it looked like a green lightning bolt had flashed. Tsunade was left with a sick feeling in the bottom of her stomach. Yuri we are screwed, aren't we? The only response from him was Ugha dot Kakashi how screwed are we? She asked the latent copy ninja. We are so screwed that we're on a whole new level. Make that universe of screwedness. Tsunade sighed Kami we are so screwed. Naruto slept peaceful in the mid-noon sun curled into a ball on Tsunade's bed, unaware that he was being watched. Both brothers were in the room standing over him. Yep that's definitely Arashi, and Kashina's kid can't miss it with a face like that. And from what we've seen he act just as much like his mother as he does his father. He's a good kid. Naruto stretched in his sleep dreaming a peaceful dream blissfully unaware of the world around him. Lee smiled. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if we made the right choice leaving him here, this village doesn't deserve him. But all things considered we didn't have a choice in the matter did we? As they turned to leave Lee gave one last fleeting glance at Naruto rest up kid you're going to need it. In a flash they were gone, leaving no trace of them ever being there. The hidden ninja village of Konoha was alive with its normal hustle and bustle, repairs were going smoothly, as most of the night damage was refined to only a few areas, and crews were expected to have the work done by this evening. Tsunade looked at the two figures standing on the edge of the build looking over the village scowling. She made no words to announce herself to them she didn't have to. They already knew. She stepped forward until she was but three feet behind them, and then they made their thoughts clear. We're not happy Tsunade we're not happy at all. We assume you know why. Tsunade didn't want to say anything she knew what was coming. On that night all those years ago when we left Naruto in the care of this village, we were assured his safety and well-being, so why is it whenever his name is spoken it come off as acid on the tongue? Tsunade held her ground and prepared to respond when she was interrupted. And don't think we haven't seen the violence against him just because we weren't here doesn't mean we haven't been watching him. As this was said Lee held out his arm and a white falcon landed on it, roosting a few seconds before it took off into the blue skies again and with it Tsunade's last ray of hope for the village. The Noha is truly blessed to have a spirit fox in their midst, yet they wish his death. You have no clue how much Naruto loves this village, this people, this land. And yet on the day of his birth he is forced to hide in fear of his own death at the hands of that we he saves from a most painful vengeance every day spoke Kai. When we left him here it was because we wanted to we left him here because we wanted to keep him safe. Our homeland has been at war for the last 20 years Tsunade. Naruto's clan and ours have had a bond that stretches over a thousand years, he and his entire family were as such to us. Family. And it is only natural we shared many of the same enemies. Enemies who want nothing more to see the last heir of the Uzumaki clan dead. With the country in constant battle areas of peace are few and far between, and we couldn't be sure if we could protect him all the time. When the Kuaibi attacked and was sealed into his stomach, we weren't sure what to do, but Arashi in his dying words convinced us that Naruto would be alright if we left him here. If we had had any clue of what his life would have been like we would have never left him here. If Arashi were alive he would have destroyed Konoha himself after witnessing the treatment of his son, let alone what Kishina would do if they both were here. Hell the only reason we haven't is because of Naruto, he is the only thing that is keeping this village from destruction at our hands. Tsunade's eyes widened and her breath was caught in her throat while the two finished. Naruto is very special. He wishes to protect this village these people, even after what he has been through he truly has a kind heart and we're glad that there are some who can see that. It is these people that keep him going, that keep his dream alive, their love their own kindness and compassion are like food to a starving man for him. 
now that he is turning into a spurt fox he will need their support more than ever, and even though we haven't been there for him as much as we wanted we're going to be there for him now. A peaceful zephyr blew across the rooftop. Naruto will be waking up soon you should be there when he does we'll talk more later. With that said they disappeared in respective ways, and Tsunade let out a breath she didn't know she was holding. I'm getting too old for this I need a drink. When Tsunade returned to her office she was not surprised to find the Kakashi, Jiraiya and Shizune were waiting for her. Are we screwed? Asked Jiraiya. Nope, just barley though remind me to never ever in the name of all the is sweet and heavenly to take Naruto for granted because he is the only thing that saved us. Said Tsunade as she pulled a bottle of sake out from nowhere. Where did she get that? Thought everyone as they watched her go to work on the bottle. Unfortunately I didn't learn anything else, but they said they'll talk more with me later, so I guess until then you all can relax. With that matter cleared Kakashi nodded his head and disappeared in a poof of smoke while Jiraiya went out his usual way. The window. I'd wish he would just use the door like a normal person or poof away like Kakashi, but knew oh he has to jump out the window. Thought Tsunade laying her head on the desk. Naruto felt the sun tickle his face with its warm caress lulling him gently out of his sleep. Wake up kid. Then he heard the voice of that damned fox telling him to get up. He stretched his arms high above his head yawning and unintentionally taking in the scent of the room he was in. M slugs, document papers, pig and. Sake. With that he opened his eyes and looked around. Where am I? Dot. He said to none in particular as he looked around the room taking in more of the scent that was all around him it smelled. Botch Ann's room he said all he realized where he was. Still in his morning fog he got and stated walking towards the bathroom to perform his morning habit. After exiting he was noticing that he was feeling kinda strange and stopped in front of Tsunade's large body length mirror to look himself over. Ha I feel fine I guess. Heads here arms here legs here. Everything looks alright ears are fine. He said feeling his ear twitch a bit. Reaching behind he took a few seconds to study his back. Yup everything's here, tail's fine dotty stopped cold. Wait tail. I don't have aiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiii
I have to go and get lost on the path of life I'll report in later. But that he left in the same direction of Jurea, hoping to join him first he turns into a fox, and now this whatever happened to the days when things were simple. Like him growing four chakra tails, being possessed by a bloodthirsty fox spirit and trying to kill us, I miss those days. He thought looking up towards the sky. Back in the room Naruto was currently being cuddled while Tsunade looked at the scene before her she did have to admit he did look cute with those fox ears, but. Oh what the hell. Now Naruto was being cuddled by not one but two women who he was starting to question the sanity of. The tails and ears are Lady Magna Kit Dot after about two minutes of cuddling, three more for Shizune, Naruto was now standing in front of Tsunade, who was looking at him from head to toe. And she went as looked at the two ears on top of his head twitch, they were both fox ears, and they were the same when he had transformed they didn't look anything like the Kai Ubi's just normal red fox ears, and a somewhat large bushy red tail yup nothing strange about that. Well you don't look that bad. She said casually noticing the look Naruto gave her oops. Don't look that bad. I got a tail for crying out loud a tail. My life is over I'm just gonna curl up and die here. He said falling to his knees and burying his head in his hands. Poof it was a sound not unlike that of a shadow clone being dispelled, and another tail appeared in a small plume of smoke. Tsunade blinked as she looked at the second tail well that's interesting. She thought. Please tell me that's not what I think it is. Asked Naruto from his position on the floor. It's. Another tail. Said Shizune as she looked at the tail slowly swishing. The yell could be heard even outside. After about 30 minutes of claiming Naruto down and another hour of formulating a plan upon hearing the story that Naruto had told them. Oh and realizing Naruto couldn't stay up here forever Tsunade had given Naruto his privileges. Okay Naruto until we can get things straightened out we can't risk having you outside for that long. You'll have to cover your ears and your tails, which if I'm right you'll be getting seven more of before the day is over. Also I don't recommend doing any training at least not for now anyway. Oh and one more thing no missions for a while. Surprisingly there was no protest from the blonde in question, as he still had his eyes locked to the floor, a look of sadness glued upon his face. The tense mood was broken when Naruto's stomach announced its presence by grumbling. Quite loud actually. Tsunade smiled as she laid a hand on the blushing blonde's shoulder. Why don't you go get something to eat, but remember not to stay out too long okay? She said with a smile. Looking up at her he smiled it wasn't one of his trademark fox grin smiles, but it was a true smile, a smile Tsunade felt honored to receive. Just as he was about to turn and leave he felt arm wrap themselves around him again. Don't worry everything will work out somehow Naruto. And with that he felt a tear come to his eye. Tsunade smiled as she wiped the tear away and began forming ideas on how to conceal him. And how to deal with the council. Elsewhere Sakura was walking through town she wasn't really fuming, but she was chilling either. Naruto was still on her mind, she hadn't seen him yesterday after the battle, and she hadn't seen him today either, and she was starting to get worried not that she would ever admit it, though she still was hold a deep resentment for him after that failed mission. She decided that if he was in fact okay, then he would be at the once place he could almost always be found at, and if he wasn't there, then he was training at least she hoped. So she set off in her self-proclaimed mission with a mental cry of inner Sakura. Cha. Anada had awoken earlier that morning, and after being interrogated by her father for three hours, thought it best if she spend some time out of the house. Now she was just walking down the street not really paying attention to where she was going, having no clue of what she would encounter today. Naruto was walking faster than he normally would trying to avoid glares and stares as he speed walked his way to Ichiraku's. After about 30 minutes Tsunade had managed to get him cover in a large overhang coat and hat, he looked for a better part of the word shady. Unfortunately the weather wasn't on his side, as the temperature had hit a nice 95 degrees, making him for lack of a better word roasting. Words travels really fast and in a ninja town even faster, so it was no surprise he was receiving more glares and death threats than usual. He was also drawing strange glances as he looked a bit overdressed in the large coat and out of place hat, especially in this type of, and now he had three tails swishing underneath of that coat of his, as people looked about trying to discern the source of the sound. Oh you'll be fine she says, it isn't that strange she says hump she's not the one growing tails. In record time he had made it the Raymond shop and was ordering. Strangely he was asked no question about his odd choice of clothing by the old man or am, but they had already been briefed by Tsunade and knew what the situation was. The large bowl of miso pork flavored Raymond was placed in front of the boy with a smile as he began to eat at a pace which made am question his health, but a sad smile from her father told her more than what she needed to know. You didn't need to look to see that Naruto was down you could just feel it, she wanted to give the poor boy a hug, and probably would have if another customer had just walked up. Anada had walked around for a good couple of hours when she felt his stomach rumble, bring her out of her stupor. Oddly she recognized where she was at she was in front of Naruto's favorite Raymond shop. 
Hinata was not one to eat ramen that often, but today she felt an odd craving for it and walked into the shop taking a seat next to a person in a coat and hat. The old man was surprised to see a high uga here, especially this one sure she'd stop by, but only once in a blue moon. His eyes then shifted to Naruto who was just now finishing his bowl of ramen and saw a chance to bring him out of his rut a little. And have some fun. Being a ramen shopper is just like being a bartender people will talk to you all you have to do is listen and you can learn quite a lot even some of what you're not supposed to know. Oi Naruto let me get you another bowl and don't worry about the charge it's on the house. At that second Hinata froze and wanted to be very far away as she slowly turned her head to look at the blonde next to her. Oh I almost forgot. What would you be having Miss Hinata? Asked the old man with a glint in his eye. Naruto's chopstick stopped midway to his open mouth and tumbled out of his four tails. Memories flashed through his head faster than he could imagine until it was like a full movie of what happened last night and a blush right itself across his face. I was wondering when you would remember what happened last night. I was going to use it to torture you with, but this human beat me to the punch. Oh and might I add Kit nice touch taking her to the garden, it's a really beautiful place. And before I forget extra points on the muzzling. Dot the fox was literally rolling around laughing in the cage. Um. Hi Hinata Chan Dot he said after sampling the scent that belonged to no one but her. When he turned his head he found that he was no more than a few inches from the face of a blushing Hinata Hayuga. It was a perfect peaceful moment until Kiba came busting in the place that is. Upon spotting Kiba Naruto ducked his head back in the other direction, but that didn't save him from Kiba's eyes. Oi Naruto what happened to you last night you baka we could have used your help. Good to see you're alive anyway. He said as Akamaru barked in agreement then took notice of Hinata who he hadn't seen all day. Hey Hinata is it true what happened last night? He asked in a hushed tone. W well u um us dot yes she said blushing as she looked towards Naruto. Wow Hinata you're really brave to have taken on that sound elite yourself last night which caused Hinata to blush more poof five tails. Did you guys hear something asked Kiba his ears picking up on it. It seemed things couldn't get any worse to Naruto when she had to show. Naruto. Poof six tails. Oh sweet Kami help me. He thought as he put his head on the table. Enter Sakura looking well pissed. Naruto where are you? Oh hey Hinata, Kiba. It's amazing how she can just shut off her angry like that isn't it? H hello Sakura-chan stuttered out Hinata. Hey said Kiba with an accompanying woo from Akamaru. At this point Naruto decided confrontation was inevitable and decides to announce his presence. Hey Sakura-chan. Wrong move. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. In less than half a second Sakura had made her way next to Naruto, totally disregarding Hinata and everyone else, and began berating him for not being able to help track the fox down last night and disappearing in the middle of the battle. All of said berating culminated in Sakura picking Naruto up by the collar and shaking him like a rag doll while telling Hai not to make her worry like that. One set back down Naruto was starting to wonder if things could get any worse, so it wasn't surprising when Sakura took notice of his strange choice in clothes that day. Naruto at 90 degrees out and you're wearing a hat and coat, what is wrong with you? She said letting her inner anger at the boy take over. Naruto was mildly surprised had the first time she talks to me in weeks and it to berate for wearing a coat and a hat, plus not helping to capture the fox, not even a hey, are you or I didn't see you after the battle didn't know if you died or not, not she comes to yell at me for wearing a coat. Goof seven tails oh no. What was that? Asked Sakura looking around. I don't know said Kibo also looking around the Raymond shop for the source of the noise. This is the second time I've heard it. Sakura, although distracted for a moment, went back on the ball as her inner anger started control her actions. Okay Naruto take off that jacket and coat just looking at you is making me sweat said Sakura. Kiba was unknowingly making things worse when he said yeah man I mean come on look at you you're burning up in that thing. As he noticed Naruto sweating, but for an entirely different reason that he was thinking. Nah I'm fine said Naruto really I'm fine. Waving his hands. But Sakura wasn't taking no for an answer and began to struggle with the coat Naruto had a firm grip on. Erg Naruto. Her no. Hinata wanted to do something, but she couldn't move it was like watching a television and she was froze to the spot. The struggle was starting to garner a lot of outside attention as it became increasingly more violent and loud. The end result of the struggle was an almost exact replay of the situation earlier, Sakura pulled as hard as she could, but Naruto was pulled with, and when the dust cleared, she held the ripped shirt, and Naruto was face planted on the ground coatless and hatless poof poof, and now with all nine tails. Naruto opened his eye and was up and gone in flash from a smoke bomb, but even thought it may have only been two seconds, it was long enough for everyone to see it. What the hell? Asked Sakura as she held the tattered remains of the coat and hat. Kiba wasn't sure what he had saw, first he had seen Naruto on the ground, then he saw something red, and Naruto was gone. 
The old man saw it only a second, but couldn't make much out, except for the ears, and AM had seen it all from the coat being ripped to the nine tails and the hat flying off revealing a pair of fox ear, cute fox ears. She added as an afterthought while she covered her mouth with her hands. It was then that the ramifications of what she had seen struck her and her father and they didn't like it at all. This meant that poor boy's life was about to get even harder because they weren't the only ones who had seen it, a lot of people had gathered around the little Raymond shop and there was good chance they had seen it too. They draped their heads in sorrow for the boy. Naruto flew across the rooftops as fast as he could running, jumping doing anything to get away. He didn't know where to go, home? No. Word spreads too fast, and that's just what he didn't need a swarm of angry ninja ready to kill the fox boy. He could only think of one place to go, but he couldn't get there quickly enough without more people spotting him and following him at this speed. Hit transform, you're must faster in your fox form. Naruto didn't even think but just asked how. Dot imagine yourself growing. Picture the change in your head and focus your energy on it. Dot Naruto focused on an image of fox, a red fox large and powerful and instantly blue chakra, started rolling about him, and he felt himself changing to his fox form, and he was off to places known only to him. And Hinata. As he ran he felt himself adjusting to this new form, he felt himself liking it. It felt natural fox him as he leapt through the dense forest maneuvering through trees like a lost comet. Well what are you going to do kid? As much as I would like to see you raise that accursed city to ash that's just wishful thinking on part. Naruto thought long and hard about that one. No, he definitely wouldn't be destroying towns, but wasn't sure about what he was going to do. He could run away and not look back, but something didn't feel right about that it was like he was forgetting something. Please Naruto don't leave me alone dot, the voice rung clear in his head it was Hinata's. Don't worry everything will work out soon aids. He couldn't leave behind the people he cared about. No he decided, he wasn't going to leave, but he wasn't coming back until at least nightfall that way there'd be less people out to see him. We'll just keep an eye on him to make sure he's alright Kai, but right now I do believe that we have a council meeting to interrupt dot Lee said to Kai, while looking into the strange crystal ball that reviled Naruto. I do believe you're right Lee dot. The Council of the Leaf Village, Clan Heads Village Elders and Hokage of Pastor Hokage present. This meeting was in full swing as the case topic was a heated one. Naruto has proven himself time and time again as nothing but a dedicated ninja and wished to protect his village said Tsunade. We cannot have that demon roam freely around you witnessed what he did to those sound Jounin. He swatted them as if them were mere bugs. Yelled Hiyashi Hayuga. No. What I saw was him save your daughter and a good portion of our ninja. Said Kakashi eyeing the man. This caused the whole room to light up in a swarm of whispers at this revelation. The three head elders rose. This matter has been debated and debated we have decided that for the safety of the village, we must take action against this threat. Tsunade froze they couldn't be planning on that, but knowing who they were and what they thought. We have decided in favor of Hyugas and the boy must be dealt with, and we will the door burst open flying against the wall. You'll do what? Asked Kai as he and Lee as made their way into the council chamber. You'll do nothing that is what you will do. Said Lee. Tsunade was split mentally on one side she was extremely happy that Naruto would be fine, but on the other side, she was really scared about what these two would do. Danzo was the first to rise how dare you. Who do you think you are? The disrespect this council judgment is an act of war the boy will be terminated, and that is final. He yelled roaring at Lee and Kai. Kai said nothing but his eyes changed, and in an instant he had Danzo by the collar of his shirt off the ground with Lee at his side. Listen and listen well child. 400 years I've walked this earth and I've yet to see such stupidity as yours. I remember forging the five nations as well as picking the first Hokage. Lee spoke up next 250 years old and I've yet to hear a stupider question than what you just asked. We are Prince Kai and Lee Kasu of the Kasu clan first and second heir to the throne of the Mystic Valley. I was next to speak again as he held Danzo by his collar. And by the way I wasn't asking that you do nothing I was telling you that you will do nothing. With that he set the man down as Lee held up his hand as a rather old and tattered scroll appeared out of thin air and began to unravel itself. This is a contract that has been in our family for over a thousand years. And it clearly states our intent. Said Lee as he pointed and the scroll flew to Tsunade. Now if you would read the scroll please. Tsunade looked at the ancient document eyes bugging out at what it implied so with hands shaking, she began reading the ancient text. This document is proof thereby representing that both parties are in equal agreements with the terms which are as followed. This contract is established on the basis that all members and future heirs of the Uzumaki clan and blood right are hereby protected and exhumed as a non-blood right branch family of the Imperial Kasu clan and fall under its protection. As such members will be protected in times of need by said royal family and heirs so on and so forth as is able. Infraction against the Uzumaki clan unless by just cause will result in severe consequences as it is pertained as infraction against the royal family. 
as this document pertains to safekeeping of the Uzumaki blood rite, existing members of said blood rite reserve the means to summon any Kasu Air i.e. dragon, wolf, white tiger, white fox, rabbit, and battler and subsequent knee, as pertains to the previously styed agreement through chakra and or magic etc. This contract's agreement is not nullified or rendered void of the existing secular contract between the Uzumaki and their spirit fox companions, yet encompasses them as members non-blood right branch family and protect by the previously cited agreement as pertains so on and so forth. Such as the agreement has been ascertained this contract is rendered effective as signed head of the Kasu clan, 10th Emperor Masahari Kasu, head of the Uzumaki clan Namakas Uzumaki of the Mystic Valley. Tsunade sat down as she finished her throat feeling dry while smiled at the council. The rest of the council was quiet as Lee and Kai addressed them, do you really want to go to war against the Mystic Valley? They asked with a smile. Dot didn't think so. Naruto Uzumaki and any spirit fox affiliated with his family are under our protection make sure that is spread well across this village, because if we even think that something is being down to hurt Naruto. May heaven help whoever Dot. But that they turned to talk to Tsunade but was stopped by Danzo. You. You can't do this. How can you protect a demon? The child. That demon is the pure essence of evil. Dot yelled at their retreating forms. They said nothing but chanted something and gestured to the middle of the room with their hands and a pool of what could only be described as liquid light rose from the floor and formed a sphere which was viewing Naruto as he lay on his back in fox form, wriggling back like a dog on a soft bed of grass feet in the air. It was quite hilarious actually. Oh yeah that's the pure essence of evil alright we better hide in case he decides to chase butterflies. Said Lee watching the globe. With that both princes turned to leave. Bit your tongue hi Uga said Kai catching Hiashi's discontent before it left his mouth as they walked out the broken door. Naruto had spent about three hours in the garden just relaxing and thinking. Henge. Transformation poof as the smoke cleared he looked down at himself. Darn it. Almost had it. He yelled looking at the solitary tail that swayed behind him. After about five more tries and four more curses, Naruto had finally managed to hide his fox features and decided to set off for home, but not before taking one last glance at the garden. The full moon would be here soon, and the moonflowers would be blooming. It had been a long 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 day for Tsunade, and she was ready to go home and go to bed, but as she entered her room, she came face to face with a sight that made her want to laugh. Apparently Shizune had taken a liking to cuddling Naruto as said boy was once again being cuddled. Shizune stopped her cuddling for a few seconds to look at Tsunade and blushed. I couldn't help it. She said meekly as she rubbed Naruto behind the ear who found it strangely enjoyable. Tsunade just put her head to her head. This hadn't been a dog day afternoon no the most assuredly been a fox day afternoon. To be continued. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.